do a serious one. Yeah, yeah. So joining you live from the World Championship 2023 in Barcelona, the Living Legend Podcast. Greetings. I am Victor Goldmain. The Banished Zone are going to be hosting a Heavy Hitters pre-release event on the 27th of January. And you can buy tickets now on the brand spanking new website. I bet that cost them a lot of gold. But let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, Olympia just seems really cool and very much lends himself to um like the wager as a mechanic just makes sense in warrior i know there was somebody in the comment section that were like oh like you said this thing and now you're saying something else what do you mean and it's like well all like things can uh can evolve as we think about them and talk about them first oh, of yeah, all. Right. second well, of all i think objectively wager does make sense in the wider scope of warrior as a class <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah i remember the comment actually yeah. Yeah. Well, that and also we are three people and not one person with three heads, yeah. so we can each have individual opinions on something. Um, yeah, and they can be different. Um, I think the comment was. Yeah, so, I, I think, think the. Are we, are we recording now? We could just roll into this. We are, we are recording wager. now. Hopefully the audio is fine. But yes, we are recording. Nice. But yeah, welcome to Living Legends podcast. I'm your host for today. My name's Anz from Going and Gaming. We'll just continue this this wager thread uh, as we were as we were just naturally going into it. Uh, but as always, joined by uh, two lovely co-hosts on Living Legends podcast. We got Bill first of all. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Big, big fan. We're going to be talking about heavy hitters some more this week. Uh, not sure if that was obvious by the title, but here you go. Yeah, I'm. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure the title's just going to just say top five in big bold letters, <laughs> and it'll just Absolutely. be like top five. Whoa, spoilers. <laughs> Uh, they've read the title. They've seen the thumbnail. They know it's <laughs> top the... five cards from three known competitive players. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> Extremely yes. sweaty, spiky players. Well, the, funny, right. the funniest part about that is, is I feel myself getting less and less competitive as flesh and blood goes on, which is kind of this weird, this weird thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah. One yeah. of the, uh, just as like a brief uh, interjection before we hand back over to Cal, I, I mm -hmm. resonate with that because I think outside of my top five list, I didn't actually include this in my top five list. The card that I'm the most excited about is Deathmatch Arena. Yeah, um, me too. Because yeah. it, it, to me, it feels like it'll be the advent of uh, just an alternate set of like rule set for UPF where it's like, oh, hey, we're just going to start with a Deathmatch Arena in play. Yeah, so yeah, because it's just like people have plain... been wanting to do it anyway. Why not? Yeah, like the old plane chase thing. You know, you you yeah. start with a location in play like magic, so... and then you can maybe travel to each landmark as they come out. But yeah, carry on. <laughs> that's we haven't even introduced Kel yet. That's there we go. actually hi, hi, I'm Kel. That's actually really funny because I'm in the process of building myself a uh, commander <laughs> precon battle box that has plane chase like built into it. Gonna, um, gonna, oh, it's just, we're just, oh, there he is. Oh, oh hello. Well, hello. You, you guys froze for a second, but I didn't yeah. froze, so all the audience heard that I'm in the process of building a, Fantastic. a plane chase uh, commander precon battle box, um, which oh, is, really? yeah, yeah, so it's actually kind of funny. Um, Deathmatch Arena, I, I pulled it up here so all of the, the visual folks can mm -hmm. see. We can, we can go ahead and talk about it first right now just to kind of... Yeah. You know, so all the audio yeah. only people can hear because it's the new fabled card and it is rad as hell. And I think I love it. I when when we went into the top five, I kind of just typed out my top five and I made a couple little ca caveats. And I was like, I don't want to include heroes because I think they're too obvious and I think I think they're just gimmies. And then the fabled because I think I have a feeling all of us would pick the fabled as one of our top five cards. So I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna get out of the way. We're not gonna we're, we're, we shouldn't talk about well we should talk about it, but we shouldn't include it on the list just because it's <laughs> it's too much of a gimme. Um, yeah, especially for this podcast. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. So like I, the, the, literally the second I saw it, I typed out, I don't remember if it was in this chat or in a different chat, but I was like, I want to do UPF with this already in play. Like this is yeah. like, yeah. yeah, just, just starts in play. So here, let me, I'm going to read it. I have it. It's like sideways. <laughs> it's so, sideways, yeah. so Bill, Bill was right. Uh, so like, this is a hundred percent confirmation. Bill prognosticated. The Deathmatch Arena is a landmark, the first landmark since uh, <laughs> Tales of Aria, which is like Hell yeah. been a little while. Um, and so 
The Deathmatch Arena is a generic action landmark. So this is also the first generic landmark. So anyone can play this, which is cool. Uh, and it says oh, yeah. uh, it's legendary, so you can only have one of them in your deck. But like I said, I, I'm not putting this in the deck. We're starting with this in play when, when, I, when I'm playing with this card. It has go again. And it says heroes can attack any opposing hero. Uh, when a hero deals lethal damage to another hero, they create gold tokens equal to the number of heroes who started this game so it's um it is the <laughs> clearly the most uh competitive constructed cc fabled ever made um <laughs> no dude it's it's literally a upf yeah. <laughs> upf fabled um oh. that's what it is and i love it i love yeah. it so much to me this uh just goes into the pile of my all my dedicated upf cards where it's like things like promise of plenty gorgonian tome go bananas yep. Like, all the things that you play in UPF because they are fun, and you just have these, like, auto-include slots to be, like... Yeah, whenever I try to explain it to somebody, it's like, oh, no, you play Gorgonian Tome in your deck because everybody else plays Gorgonian Tome. It's like, well, what, why would I want my opponent to draw four cards? Because it's cool! Because, <laughs> because it's fun, damn it. Because it's sick! <laughs> because then you get to draw five cards! Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You, you do it because it's fun. Like... Yeah. I know that yeah. might be surprising to some some flesh and blood players out there, but sometimes you put cards in your deck because it's fun, not because it's the most yeah. optimal thing. Um, so, yeah. what what's cool about this is I, I'm I'm gonna really push for this. So, um, I've I really want to do a sealed UPF game, uh, like live stream with uh, you know, possibly Bill, possibly As. We'll see if they're available when the time comes. Uh, Ian already said he's like so down for 100% it down. Um, is. so i want to do a upf uh you know a heavy hitters sealed and i think i want to propose to everyone that we start with deathmatch in play and the way mm -hmm. i'm going to represent that is i'm just going to have the card just like just plastered on the live stream um so everyone can can see it and uh yeah mm -hmm. now i want to do that it's going to be fun yeah um yeah and seeing this, seeing this card actually made me think. Oh, okay. I've got, I've still got some UPF content, you know, that's archived in my hard mm -hmm. drives. I, I'm just like, you know, I did, never got around to editing it to the standard that I used to do because I just, it's just too much work for one person, and I, you know, do other things. Um, but um, obviously, you guys, you guys appeared in it uh, as well as Stephen DM Amado when we were doing the UPF games back in the day. It was like two years ago. It was before Uprising released. Yeah. Uh, it made me it made me just upload the raw footage basically of that discord call because um it, there was a rule in there because because essentially that's what we that's what you'd be doing with this card this landmark you would house rule it so it starts in play and you know you just make up these stupid games that you know end up being ridiculously fun and i think a lot of people will do that they'll make their own sort of planes chase thing where you can just go to each landmark i don't know how many landmarks we're going to get but yeah, it seems like a seems like such a fun idea. They're all um, like, I'm, I'm so in for more landmarks. Personally. They're all like fabled. <laughs> we called it as well. Multiple hundred when we, when, cards. Yeah. When we were speaking about the fabled, we we're like, oh yeah, it could be the Deathmatch Arena. It could be the landmark. You know, two episodes ago, I believe. Bill. And then yeah, he called it, man. It, exactly. Yeah. So uh, it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, it's it's in the Deathmatch Arena. It is a place. You know, we're all there doing the thing. It you makes know, sense. I'm really glad it's not like what a lot of folks were like. I hope it's a brute card that, like, when you pitch it, it intimidates your opponent. Oh, like, that yeah, would be busted it. as hell. And someone was yeah. like, "Oh, I want it to be a, I want it to be a blue card. That you pitch it, it creates a gold." And I'm like, "That would also be busted as hell." Um, <laughs> so I'm glad it's like this janky UPF yeah. cold foil oh God. only thing. I, by the way, I think I it's only. Cannot cold foil. even imagine. Yeah, I think it's only cold foil too. I cannot even imagine for a second how broken a uh, like. Honestly, even if it was a red fabled, like a brute gem that Ugh. intimidated on on pitch, that'd be no thanks. Disgusting, so busted. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Even uh, if it was like a you pitch it and it forces you to discard a card or something, that would still be kind of busted. Um, still crazy because you can do it on your opponent's turn. Yeah, it's yeah. scowling flesh bag, but whenever you want, that's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, I'm happy. It's, no, it's interesting to see um janky card. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. It'd be interesting to see where they land in the marketplace as well, because obviously they're not a sought-after card for Constructed, which is where all the price normally is. Um, but it's only available in cold foil, I believe, as as you guys have said. So it'd be interesting to see how much the singles actually are for this. But I don't think they'll be expensive, right, for this? 
Uh, yeah, probably not. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not, not a market yeah. guy, but it, I, I've heard that they're pretty rare, so they might just be Maybe. expensive based on that. Um, or default. Yeah, might just yeah. be hard to get potentially. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe if you're a, you know, UPF fan, maybe you'll actually be able to pick one up. We'll see. We'll see. I I, I definitely want to get one, um, and I'm not very I'm not really buying a ton of uh, heavy hitters, so hopefully they're low because I don't want to pay too much for one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. But cool, um, cool card. But yeah, that uh, that aside, this episode today um, is uh, all about our top five cards from this set, and. Um, in typical heavy, uh, sorry, I was going to say heavy hitters fashion. It definitely is heavy hitters fashion, but in typical Living Legends podcast <laughs> fashion, uh, these cards could be on our list for a myriad of different reasons, whether it's the art, whether it's the flavor, whether it's the theme. It's not going to be your top five meta decks for constructed play or anything like this. It's just a, a smattering of our favorites for whatever reason, which I'm sure we have plenty of reasons to put them, putting them on our list. So just wanted to reiterate that before... Um, but um, before we go into it, does anyone have any sort of weeks in flesh and blood at all, or what have they been doing? Um, not if anything. Really, <laughs> to be honest, I <laughs> I just got back. Or just from what has been doing in general? I just got back from the last chance qualifier in LA for Shadowverse Evolve. Uh, Bushi Road flew me out there um, as yeah. like a as like a media guest. Um, I had an absolute blast. I met uh, a lot of the organized play for Boucher, or the organized play team for Bushiro. They're all absolutely fantastic people. Some of the people are people that I'll see again in Japan, like the head judge for Shadowverse Evolve, who will be in Japan. Um, nice. uh, some the community was incredibly awesome. Like uh, I met another caster who's a caster for White Shorts. I met uh, he was my ran, met round one opponent. I met another dude who qualified for uh, Cardfight Vanguard Worlds in Japan. So I was like, oh, I'll see you in Japan. Um, so just. Really, really awesome people, awesome community. I had, I had a good time, um, and uh, that, that's that's what I mostly did. I will have a full vlog on that uh, sometime this week or early next week. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I literally just got back from got back from LA like just just the other day. So, uh, well, whenever whenever we say what have you been doing, flesh and blood related this week, you know, flesh and blood is just doing things in life really so you know flesh and blood we're out and about we're doing things in our bodies so there we go that's it yeah my um, my like actual flesh and blood uh, play involvement likely won't really kick off until i get back from japan because uh yeah. I, I leave for japan next wednesday uh, i might actually try to do some Jap- uh, flesh and blood stuff in japan uh because the the heavy hitters launches uh while i'm there so i'm gonna be in akihabara right. so uh, I might I might try to hit up a, a shop or two and, and see what's what. Um, might meet with some uh, Japanese flesh and blood um, uh, like community members like Yui. Um, she and I have already like talked a little bit about potentially like hanging out. So yeah, nice. so I, I might I might do some flesh and blood stuff while I'm in Japan, but we'll see we'll see how it goes. Um, but there'll definitely be a card shop there or something you can go to and get some packs at oh, least. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I'm in Akihabara. There's like a absolute crap ton of, of shops um, exactly card yeah. shops yeah I, I have some planned out that I'm that I'm gonna hit up but um, nice yeah there yeah so but but most of my flesh and blood stuff will will be on postpone until I get back and then I want to do stuff like the aforementioned heavy hitters uh, sealed live stream UPF thing and all that all that kind of good stuff and um, possibly possibly get Brian gottlieb on the channel to talk about um or rather on living legends to talk about heavy hitters all that all that kind of good stuff that you've come to expect um yeah we can carry that on i'm sure we'll be up for it what about you bill you said you were doing some uh this weekend yeah on uh this past sunday so two days ago we did some more goliath gauntlet filming and uh started up my uh i want to say i wanted to say annual but it's really more like quarterly um, full set review with uh, Mr. Tommy Fresh of Fresh and Buds uh, for nice. heavy hitters. So we got we're we're doing it in two chunks because it's usually quite a bit to get through uh, in one sitting. Yeah. Um, but we got about halfway through. We're going to be doing the rest of it uh, this Friday, and uh, yeah, it's it's always just really nice because there are a couple cards um, that I had just like totally glossed over that ended up being ones that I was really surprised about. Like, for example, um, 
there was which one was it uh it was not <laughs> not pound <laughs> town because a <laughs> lot of the cards one, <laughs> a lot of the cards in this set have ridiculous names Wait, um pound town ball breaker what are you talking about those are perfectly normal names <laughs> Not Viga Gus. not sus at all. Where is it? Oh no, it's a guardian card. I was looking under uh, brute for this card, but um, there's a common for guardian called concuss that mm, yeah. I'm actually like kind of high on in terms of just like design for these cards. Um, it's just when this hits a hero, if it has greater attack than its base, they discard a card, and it's a three cost six attack. Yeah, like I don't know. That seems good to me. Um, and it like outclasses some of the rare attacks that I've seen. Like I, the the design of this set is really cool, and there are power cards kind of where you wouldn't expect them. So, um, just being able to go through each individual card and sort of pick them out that way uh, is really valuable for me. Just to sort of really look at the set as a whole. Um, I mean, just 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 going off of that card that you just said there, concuss. There is yep. there is there is something similar to that already as well in a card called Thump, which is from um, mm -hmm. Tales of Ari, which says when its power is greater than its base, it has dominate, and if it hits, they discard a card. So I don't like the the way that that could be going. Guardian yeah. with more discard a card on hit effects, stable to See, huge attacks. Con concuss is strictly worse because you can't rhyme it with pump like you can thump. You can't say pump. pump yeah, pump, pump, the thump. Thump. I'm pump my thump. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, yeah. but yeah, the cool thing about it is uh, Thump does get dominate, but it also costs one more, so mm -hmm. it requires yeah. two cards to to play at its at its base. Yeah. But uh, Thump just can be played off of a blue, uh, which I think opens up its uh, utility quite a bit. I like that a lot. Um, but yeah, Pump Thump is uh, is a tragic loss uh, for the flesh and blood yeah. community. Instead of what are you you're discussing the concuss? Discuss the concuss, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Discuss the concuss. Yeah. Or like concuss is disgusting. I don't know. We'll workshop it. We'll sure. Workshop it. <laughs> we'll, well, yeah, we'll figure something out. Down in the comments, what's your what's your best way to uh, to rhyme concuss with something? Yeah. But there's a lot um, of there's a lot of intricacies with these cards though, like because obviously the power greater than the base. If you look at Thump as the uh, the the other one that's not in the set, for instance, it is a four cost, yeah. But what what could you possibly have that's in this set which would make it a, a one card dominate discard a card? I think a Vigor this... token. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. Uh, might token. Um, yeah, yeah. Might. Or the well, actually, yeah, both because vigor yeah. gives you a resource, and then uh, the might pumps it by one to make its uh, uh, its power greater. So, uh, yeah, so you could I, see those cards come back. I've come up with something, but it's it's Go if on, it's man. not pumped, so it's the opposite of pump the thump, and it's the mm. the sus concuss. Uh, the, the sus, sus <laughs> love it. The sus concuss <laughs> yeah. is the un unpumped concuss. Uh, yeah, and, just and come then in they, for six. Then they like hornswoggle you by pumping it at the last second with like a pummel, and then you discard two cards. <laughs> Boom! Double pummel. Because yeah. it was then it was because it was sus. Yeah. There something uh, something else I will say. Everybody's been making a lot of comments about how funny the uh, the names of this set are, but uh, just from collector number, like going in order for collector number for it's like the last, it's it's almost the last three cards in Guardian. Uh, we have Thunk, Wallop, and Big Bop. And yeah, Big to me, Bob that just good. has a perfect, like, cadence. Thunk, Wallop, Big Bop. Done. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the names are pretty goofy. <laughs> Let's get real. I like, I like them yeah. all. Uh, they're good. Personally. Big Bop. Like rising power as well. Like, you know, that's just, just alluding to something rising power, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's dirty. It's outrageous. Whoever thought about the names? Commendments. I, I mean, they just have, like, um, big... Big uncle energy, right? Like big, right. big yeah. old uncle energy. It's like big bop. Give him a wallop. Give him a thump. Like, like, yeah, that's, uh. yep. And then even like stuff like the like the the slightly dirty jokes, like ball breaker and all that kind of stuff. Mm. It's just got like big uncle energy. I don't know. That's Raw what, meat. Yeah. Really yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, with that but, yeah. being said, uh, what are we here to do today, as? We're here to speak about uh, our top five cards. 
Um, okay. So, uh, you know, I'm surprised that that's not... Is that is that on your list, Concast, or is that just something you, no. you, no, you reminisced about from the Tommy yeah, Fresh podcast? Yeah, just something that uh, we came across it with... Uh, or me and Tommy came across it right after we looked at a different card that, like gets overpower if its attack is greater than its base and it's a rare and i was looking at that and i'm like i'm not really feeling that one like it's good for limited because it gives it evasion later in the game but like yeah. i don't know it's it's fine and then it came across this one it's like the next card and i was like this one's so much better <laughs> so much better yeah, yeah so much and more it's not a rare for some reason <laughs> yeah hmm. yeah that's actually interesting i'm curious why one is a rare one's a common i, I assume it's for limited but for limited, maybe it's just because it's easier to block, like concuss. You can just like a double block. Yeah. Well, if it's pumped, you'd need a double yeah. block. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure either. But um, yeah, I was very impressed with concuss, and I've been very impressed with a lot of like I was. So, so how to tie that in with what I was saying previously is um, I'm just really impressed with um, where the power lies in this set. The fact that it's not all just relegated to the majestics like there are still cool commons that we'll be seeing i think make an impact in various yeah. places um like they are good enough so yeah, yeah. i mean it's uh it's, it's not like you have to deal with there's no pummels in this in this uh in this set so you don't have to deal with the double pummel off of that i mean they're both commons as well so they can both be run so, off of the running commoner decks as well which is quite vile they did actually reprint uh lunging press though so you can exactly you can yeah. sneaky lunging press this you can like attack with this with like a lunging press in your arsenal and then just kind of goozle them which is great you can the sus concuss lives. yeah, the sus yeah concuss exactly. lives on. so you're just coming in Watch for like out, a baby. just a sus concuss you know just coming in for six you know it's a break point as well. Yeah, just yeah. card, card it's in a hand, point, card, yeah. card in hand, card in arsenal, and then you're like, mm, I don't know. Lunging press with the concuss, yeah. Oof. And that, and that's gonna that's gonna appear on uh, that that whole thread actually of attack reactions uh, and stuff is gonna uh, is gonna appear on on my list for sure because there isn't too many of them. Uh, there's a lot a lot less than what I thought there would be. But lunging press is one that's made makes my list alongside another card so I, i'm just going to start this off now with my mm. number five uh while we're speaking about reactions i thought it would just uh slot in quite nicely so my number five is uh is a let me just double check it's a rare cycle uh and it's called take the upper hand for warriors um so this is it comes in red yellow and blue it's a zero cost warrior attack reaction and it says play this only if you've wagered this chain link so you probably are going to be wagering. I'm thinking this, thinking about this from an Olympia perspective. You're definitely going to be wagering. So this is like comparable to things like Iron Song Response, where if they've defended with a card from hand, you trigger the reprise, and you know you can't because you can't play Iron Song Response unless they well, it doesn't do anything unless they played a card from uh, defended with a card from hand, right? I believe uh, reprise. Yeah, it doesn't activate unless they've yep. defended with a card from hand. Yeah. Yeah, so this is like the it's the same with like the uh, zero cost um, zero cost pump attacks uh, in assassin as well. The things that care about the thing that you're doing in the set, I think it's very very good. It's a zero. I think the the reds and the blues are going to see a lot of play in Olympia decks. Maybe not maybe mm -hmm. not the yellows. Uh, the yellows are you know any anything yellow is a bit sus, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think the uh, the zero for plus three, if you've wagered this chain link, is very good. Blocks for three as well. And obviously you've got the zero for plus one uh, on the blue, blocks for three. Uh, and as we were saying previously, Warriors, they only care about getting that one damage through. So the blue is still going to be pivotal if you need to get that, that one damage through to trigger all of your wagers going off. And the plus mm -hmm. three on the, on the zero, take the upper hand, can potentially win you a game because it's plus three over the top. And there's not many... D reactions in this D reactions D reacts in this set at all is there? I don't think there's any actually. There's block cards, but no D reacts apart yeah. from the uh, the re block reinforce the line. Reinforce the line is an instant. But... Yeah, I mean reinforce uh, the line is also a... the there's yeah. a brute one, but that's a majestic. That's no fear technically prevents damage, but prevent yeah. damage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's why I think Warriors are going to be quite good in Limited and Sealed, at least, because they have an agency where no other classes have it, because you don't have any D-Reacts. So you have to you have to you have to believe that, you know, there is a, a reaction coming over the top of any Warriors attack, which can sometimes put you in a really bad situation because 
there is no dereacts in the entirety of the set. So you can't respond to the reaction almost unless you've got a, a reinforcer line or a damage prevention effect, which there are a few, but there's no there's no sort of typical reactions in the set, which I think is which I think is good. Um and take the upper hand praise on that. So yeah, that's my number five at least. Um I think the reds and the blues are gonna be staples in Olympia. Uh, and I'm very much looking yeah. forward to building building him, for sure. I'd like to point out that this is just a target attack, so it's not just weapon attacks, so you can actually pump uh, any True, of your yeah. attacks as long as... You can even pump your generics as long as you've wagered. So if you have any of the, like, the three for seven wager uh, attacks, this can pump it. So, yeah, pretty good. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's even better then. That's even better than what I thought because you could wager just a standard sword attack or some random attack and then you could C and C afterwards and give it plus three. Yeah. Which is just absolutely vile. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, target attack gets, yeah, that's, that's even better than what this should be number one. Right. Uh, yeah, let me do this again. Uh, <laughs> well, no, well, well, so you can only play it if you wagered this chain link. So you can't uh, yeah. like play this on another attack, a different chain link, but this can pump any attack. So like if you have like the, I can't remember what it's called, but the three for seven wager a gold card, that's a generic, you can pump it, you can pump it with this card. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you won't be able to see it. You won't be able to, you won't be able to plus three a C and C after you've done it, unless you've wagered that card with something before it, yeah, basically. Yeah. Unless you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to, yeah. you need to have the CNC have a wager attached to it. In yeah, order there's, to... there's some ways to do that in the set, actually. Yeah. You know, there's like, you know, target attack, yeah. your next attack gets plus three and wagers or whatever. Yeah, there's a bunch of that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. money where your mouth is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, there's a lot of that. So, uh, yeah, definitely works in a better way than what I thought, but not as over overpowered as originally thought. Well, obviously, we're working this out as we go on this podcast today, but <laughs> that's what it's all about. So, yeah, that's my that's my number. Yeah. That's my number five starting off. So, um, nice. I'll throw it over to Kel next. Okay, number here. five. Yeah, I got a, I got a cool one uh, here. Let me let me type it up. I think it's called my number. Actually, you know, I'm gonna say this. Uh, so, I'm gonna caveat my entire list by saying this is in no particular nice. order. Um, and I did, I specifically chose to not include the assassin cards because I've talked about them way too much and I didn't want like two thirds of my list to just be assassin cards. Um, that yeah. are, are like, so um, I did not include the Arachne specialization. That's probably the card I'm actually going to play the most, but, um, I just didn't want to include sense. it just because I, I've already talked to, to about it. I've made my own videos about it. So I want to talk about yeah. some other stuff. So, uh, let's talk about a card we haven't talked about here on the podcast yet. Um, and I think it's actually just straight up one of the coolest cards in the set. Uh, I love the art and I love the effect. So shout out to Brute Nation because we're talking about Cast Bones. This is a yeah. zero drop yeah. brute action. It blocks for three. It is a red pitch card. And it says, reveal the top six cards of your deck. First of all, I'm in. Like when it, I love effects <laughs> like this. Reveal the top six cards of your deck. Create a might token for each card with six or more attack revealed this way. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your deck in a random order. Then, if you control six or more might tokens, create an agility token. This is this is a way to do a big old big old wham wham jangle, big old big old chungus. Like you yeah. can make a, a crap load of might tokens, um, and then also possibly an, agil an agility token. Um, this card's cool, and uh, it's I don't know. I just, I just I just like effects like this. I think I think it's great. And once again, I think the art is like incredible. So. Um, yeah, that that's yeah, it's awesome. That's and with the, with K with 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 Ko as well. You, any five card you reveal is actually a six as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty nice. Um, because what what what's the what do you think the average will be on this? What do you think you'll what do you think you'll get zero for what plus what? What do you think is going to be the average? Three well, so you're plus gonna, three. You're going to be reeling six cards. It depends on like the type of deck that you're building, how how many, like, um, non-attacks you're going to have. Uh, yeah. Because all of your attacks are probably going to be six, right? So I'm yeah. going to say probably you probably have more than half attacks than non-attacks in your Brute deck. So yeah. I'm going to say, on average, probably, like, four? Four or five, four. maybe, depending? Yeah. yeah, probably four. Probably. I think that's a reasonable number to expect. I The build of KO that I want to do... Uh, runs only like Blood Rush Bellow, maybe Berserk, and this as its non-attacks in like maybe not always three ofs. 
Um, you gotta and run everything Terra. else is at least six. <laughs> you gotta run Terra Lim from Lim, man. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, but yeah, so very few non attacks, yeah. and the rest are just attacks that are base six or higher. So the dream is that it's six at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I was hedging the bets, right? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm trying to think of the average <laughs> yeah. deck, average no, I think deck. F- I think five. Yeah, I think like, you, like seeing five. six is quite a quite yeah. a large amount of your deck, so it becomes pretty likely as long as you're not if if you're only running one cast bones and the rest is attack actions, then sure, it's a hundred percent. But as soon as you yeah. even add a second cast bones, I feel like the chances do get like demonstrably higher. And this is one of those cards that like just kind of pops off with your scab skin rolls because i've seen a lot of brutes just kind of like not have like they'll, they'll roll a really good scab skins and then just not be able to use all of the all of the action points or whatever and this is just a nice little uh hey i'm gonna drop this and you know my next turn my things are just gonna thump you for like a billion um yeah yeah so i like this card it's great that's my pick yeah yeah it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things as well, like, you know, you can just drop this and then suddenly your next turn is just absolutely accentuated. So if you, it, you get yeah. nice little, it's like a nice little chain ender, isn't it? So if you'd like, maybe the only thing you can do is swing your club and then cast bones afterwards or whatever. Um, or you know, I think you know, obviously you need to go again, attack before it. But yeah, I think it's just nice to accentuate your next turn. Or turn yeah. one play. This is a great turn one play. Yeah, um, all that. The thing yeah. <laughs> that I think is is kind of sweet as well with this is uh, we're seeing that might tokens are actually going to be impactful. Like just pushing something by one can push it into a completely different um, mm. like breakpoint for blocking. Especially the like concuss like I was talking about that is a six that becomes a seven that has an impactful on hit. That's like you need yeah. three cards or two cards plus an equipment to not have to discard a card. Uh, even if you're getting like three off of this and slapping it onto an alpha rampage <laughs> yeah like, that becomes an attack for 12 on its own that's yeah. pretty cool <laughs> that's pretty nice yeah this is one of those cards that's gonna like you're gonna you're gonna get it in limited and then it's either going to do absolutely stone nothing or win you the game um yeah, exactly and i love it yeah. i love it so much <laughs> like some some games yeah, probably in the same fun. same event you play this you get six you get all six and you're like yes Next turn, I get to attack you for like thirteen or whatever, and then the next time you play it, you're like, "Oh, this is this is my big haymaker," and you reveal like two, and you're like, "Oh, oh no, oh, yeah. <laughs> poor, Dang. yeah, yeah, oh, it's good." Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's actually it's it's very good for me specifically that you mentioned a brute card because yes. my first card that I want to talk about is also a brute card, and Wait. I think it's disgusting. I want to talk about send packing. Um, Oh, so no. this card for all of the all the audio listeners uh, is just kind of nuts. Uh, it's a brute attack action. It's a majestic. Uh, it's a yellow, so it pitches for two. It, it costs three, attacks for six, and blocks for three. When it attacks a hero, banish a card from their arsenal. When the chain link resolves, if this didn't hit, return the banished card to its owner's hand. And important note that they even included on the card: it, the card is banished face up. So you immediately get the information as to what the card is. Yeah. Uh, if your opponent doesn't fully block it out, it's just gone forever. It, even if this does one damage to them, you've destroyed their arsenal. So, command and conquer. Um, it pitches for two, even in like a bad case scenario. It blocks for three, which brute cards don't block. So, that's just, this is crazy. And because of when the trigger happens on this, if your opponent had like a sink below or a fate foreseen or uh, an immovable, uh, unmovable or something in their arsenal... Uh, it is cleared from their arsenal before they can cast it. Um, yeah. This card's gross. <laughs> this I'm, card's I'm really gross. Not looking forward to playing against this. This is absolutely <laughs> vile because Azalea just doesn't want to block. You know, yeah. if if you if you normally see a six vanilla attack, you're just like no blocks. But then, you know, if you set up the you know your arsenal to do the skull bone, then the everything else that comes after that, you know, yeah, it's just horrible. Yeah. It, it, it's it, like, it, or you get the card back. But it goes to your hand. It's not even back into your arsenal. <laughs> oh god, yeah. So you just get it back to your hand, and it's yeah, it's even worse. What? Yeah. So I not will nice. say there, there's two two kind of interesting things about about this that I think is really funny. One of them is just kind of cute, and that is if whatever by whatever chance your opponent is playing, I guess Vincent because Chain's not legal anymore, <laughs> uh, and they have an invert existence in their arsenal. 
they you could banish the invert existence and then then, it, then they can immediately play it because you can play it from your banner zone because and it's an instant yeah. so like that's kind of cute i guess um that's funny and the other thing i think is um that helps balance this card is that if you do block it out um and this somehow has go again and they're continuing the chain maybe like on a blood rush bellows you know big old big old uh scab skin turn it does come back to your hand, so like you can still block with it, I guess. Like, so it gives you another card to block with, I suppose. It does ruin. I mean, mm. it, it ruins your setup for sure. But um, that's just another little thing to note. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. It's uh, it, it definitely does have that downside. It's kind of like swing big, where it gives your opponent a quicken if they don't fully block it out. Yeah. Um, it it's like a C and C, like loved a, a swing big very much, and you you have this card. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that it's just crazy. The fact that you also just get the information as to what it is. Yeah. If it's a card that your opponent wanted in their arsenal, like if it was, for example, um, obviously not in CC, but if it was a plunder run or mm -hmm. something that gets value if you play it from your arsenal, it just like delays them by a turn of being able to get that value. Um, yeah, I, I love send packing. I think it's great. It's an awesome attack. Uh, it's an awesome card. So that's that's my first one for sure. I dig it yeah. a lot. I. When it, yeah, the words are when this attacks a hero really sells it for me. I, I yes, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Again, the fact Something... that it just it hoses defense reactions in Arsenal is so yeah, yeah. It, it totally does yeah. too. Um, yeah, especially the what ones you want to do like... against brutes anyway because they intimidate you. It's great. <laughs> oh, wow. When you were saying um, when you were saying oh this is like a if a command and conquer met a swing big. Do you know what? Uh, <laughs> do you know what came to my head? It was the uh, the the scene. Not not well. It's a scene, I guess, in the Goblin Village in Baldur's Gate Three, where you knock on the shed and there's just like the ogre pummeling the other <laughs> yeah. ogre. Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the like uh, ogre and bugbear. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Ah, <laughs> oh, funny. Um, but um, yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that brings it back to me, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What you got? Okay, fantastic. So this is number four. Uh, again, these are in no particular order, I believe. Uh, well, I th oh, maybe maybe they are. I'm just trying to find it on uh, on Fabre, but this is called Double Down. Um, so I think this ah, is actually yes. one of the. I think this is actually one of the first ones that were spoiled a long time ago. Uh, I'm just trying to find it on Fabre so I can. Yeah, I think it, it was like maybe the first card that we saw. Yeah, it was in like yeah. a. It was like a. This and a couple other so extended, like, wasn't promos. It? Yeah. Yes, it's a promo. Um, but yeah, this is a Guardian slash Warrior action card. Uh, blocks for three. It's a Majestic. Only comes in red pitch and it costs two to play. But it says, you may destroy a gold you control rather than pay its cost. So Olympia likes generating gold. And a lot of characters can generate gold by wearing the Crown of Dominion, among other things. And then it says the next attack, so again, attack, not just weapon, but any action attack that wages this turn gets plus three and overpower. So it gets a buff and evasion, potentially for free if you have the gold out from a previous turn or whether you've had it for a while. And it says if a hero would create one or more tokens from a wager this turn, instead they create that many plus one. So it's just an absolute, again, doubling down on this next attack that I'm going to throw at you is going to hit because it's going to wager... Um, it's going to hopefully well, it wages this turn plus three and overpower. What does that mean? The next attack that wages this turn. So it needs to have another wager trigger on it, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, like, so it needs to have another. This is yeah. kind of like a, you need like a three card deal, right? Or like this yeah. and a wager that pumps a weapon or something. Uh, so it's, it's a big setup card, but you know, the payoff is pretty good. Yeah. I just love how, how it's just absolutely pure Timmy it is. It's just like, I crack my gold, I'm going to give my next thing plus three and evasion, then I'm going to wager something, whether that's stapled onto the attack or whether I've played another action after this, which then wages my next weapon swing or attack is just ridiculous. And then if you've got, if you happen to have the um, the the extra token generation, you're going to get all of that plus an additional one, which then sets up your next turn. So you're doing a big thing this turn, and then if everything goes through, you're setting up your next turn with something even larger as well. So it's just like, it's 
what I what I envision Olympia to be is similar to Azalea, where she's hitting you with all these on hits, and you're getting tokens that then affect the next turn, and it's just like a cascading, rolling snowball effect. That if you can't really control it, you're just going to die eventually. And um, we've seen how many tokens were on the board for the celebrational event um, and the calling, uh, and there was absolute shitload of tokens all over the place. So I, th I think we are going to see a lot of that. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, that's my number four. I just think it's I just think it's absolutely awesome. But what Olympia wants to do, I think that's definitely in the deck for sure. Yep, mm -hmm. I can definitely see a theme with all of the cards that you are picking as. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so double down. I considered it for my my list as well. Uh, I would think yeah. one really cool interaction with this. Um, not Olympia, but with Betsy actually, with her specialization, bet big. Is she bet yeah. she bets one of every token. So if you um, double down and then bet big, you can get like six tokens just from the one yeah. bet big. So that's pretty cool. Uh, having yeah. two agility doesn't really help, but you know, it's it's still cool. It's it's cool. Um, oh, it's pretty, yeah, brilliant. I'd, I'd still say that that's like a worthwhile yeah oh for sure. oh, yeah. trying to get even if you're doubling up on one token two mites and two um two mites and two golds are still great <laughs> yeah yeah uh two vigors oh there you go dude oh yeah yeah but if but yeah it, with olympia you're creating golds as well if it hits so you're getting two of those as well and then that's just just filtering your next turn potentially if you've got blues and you're drawing into other things it's just yeah it's just I think I think I think Olympia is probably the closest to Azalea that I would want because he obviously draws cards as well. He can filter his hand because he put, mm -hmm. puts a blue puts a blue into the into the gold and draws another card. Could potentially turn that blue into a red value card or whatever. Um, so yeah, really really liking it. And double down just accentuates that pure evasive. I'm going to hit you and generate loads of things. And it works with the card I mentioned earlier as well, the plus three or the plus one. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so yeah, really, really like it. Yeah. But yeah, going around the table All to right. mine red zone. Mm -hmm. This one pretty easy. I'll do I'll do the easy one now. So this is my spoiler card. It it feels weird picking my spoiler card, but I would have picked this even if it wasn't my spoiler card. This is uh, shift the tide of battle. I talked about it a lot last week, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. But I really love this card. Um, I love that it kind of gives you double go again. It's almost everything you want if you're playing Kasai or any any warrior that just cares about go again, which is almost all of them. Um, a lot of the response that I got after the video is like, yeah, every warrior loves this card. Some warriors love it a little bit more than others, but all of them love it. Bolton loves this. Dorinthia loves this. Kasai loves this. It's just super, super good. If you don't know what it is, it is a yellow cost zero uh, or yellow pitch zero cost warrior attack reaction blocks three target warrior attack with greater attack. Then its base gets go again, and then says the next time an opposing hero is dealt damage this turn, create an agility token. And that's just kind of like a generic, like, the next time they take damage, kind of like a plunder run type effect, which is pretty yeah. sweet. So if this attack doesn't hit, if your next attack hits, you would still get that um, agility token. And then also, um, it can pump a warrior attack, uh, like attack action cards. It doesn't have to be uh, a weapon attack. And then um, also, uh, one thing that's really cool to note is that a Dawn Blade with a plus one counter will always get uh, go again. Um, yeah. Centauri Sabres that get pumped get go again. Bolton stuff get going. It, yeah, this is way, like, really easy to pull off. So I like this card a lot. And I think when I first saw it, I was like, hmm, is this better than Glint the Quicksilver? And I don't think that's the right question. I think the right question is, how many of these do I run alongside Glint, Glint the Quicksilver? Uh, is, is, yeah. is, is, the, is the question. Um, so... It's great. And also the art is just incredible. So all of that, I like the card, yeah. even if it wasn't my spoiler. Uh, and if you haven't watched my video yet, go watch it. <laughs> go watch go watch the video. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, that's that's my little spiel yeah. on Shift the Tide. I love it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I agree with that. It's basically like two glints in one, <laughs> one for this turn, one for next turn, which is really yeah. something that warriors like. So, yeah, I think that it's going to be really impactful, too. Yep. Okay, so then it comes to me. What was my second one? Oh, yeah. Okay, so my second one is uh, sort of just 
like it's I think the most powerful of this cycle that I'm picking. I mm. I really really enjoy the rare specialization helmets mm. um, because they feel like they are so pushed, but in like a way that is sustainable. Because because they're specializations, they don't like bleed into other classes and make them um, like strong for no reason. Yeah. Um, they're something that like helps out a play style and they're going to be extremely accessible because they're rares. Like you're going to have a thousand of these, but they didn't use that as a, as an excuse to make them weak because this one, the first one I want to talk about is good time chapeau, uh, which is Betsy's <laughs> hat. This card's nuts. I know I said that already with send packing, but like there are a few cards in this set that I just think are crazy. And this is absolutely one of them. Uh, so like I said, it's uh, Betsy's specialization helmet. So it's a guardian equipment head. It has temper two, which already temper on temper two on an equipment is great. They're doing it on a lot of equipment this set, which I also think is great. And then it has a repeatable activated effect, uh, mm. which is action, destroy a gold you control. Your next attack this turn gets when this attacks a hero, wager a might and a vigor token with them and then go again. It's um, repeatable. Yeah. You don't yeah. destroy it. Yeah, you why, destroy gold. Yeah, why can you use right. this like infinite number of times? What the hell? I don't know. Why it's is, like this. This is a rare this helmet also, that honestly it, could just be a legendary. This why, is a legendary. Why does it block for two as well? Like what the hell? It blocks for two. This card is crazy. You, you know, and this, like this actually—it's a like, repeatable source of wager. Like this, this actually goes like Pog City with 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 Az's last card. Right? Yeah, because like with double down. You you can get yeah. double might and double vigor from from it like as well. And you get the guaranteed wager too. So you don't need another card to do the wager. You just need the hat plus that card and then any attack. So you can get yeah. like extra wagers. Yeah. This this goes like Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. This goes so hard. It goes this, hard. Yeah. This would if this was printed in Outsiders, for example, this hat would be like one resource, destroy this and a gold yeah, you control yeah. at this effect one time. No, it'd be like this one time, just... and like battle worn one no, or something. It'd be, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be a resource, destroy this and two silver, you know, kind kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, this is it's free other than just destroying a gold. It is repeatable. It's a source of wager in a class that has a lot of wager payoffs. Um, it's just good it blocks for two it's just good um i'm i'm really really impressed with the design of this card and again i think that this is the fact that it's repeatable this feels like a legendary this feels like guardians or i guess specifically betsy's so, like skullbone cross wrap or something that gives them incremental value over the game yeah you know yeah the more that i think about it actually i think this is so pushed because it replaces a a really important piece of equipment, right? So like you're running this, you can't run like any of the crowns or anything like that, or any of the other hats that normally like draw you a card or something like that. And I, I feel like that's why they pushed it. It's like, Hey, if you're playing um, Betsy, then you get this other hat. That's like as good as these other, like really good hats. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's very yeah. good. Um Bill's right I mean, it is... about the repeatable yeah. thing because they actually don't even print the repeatable thing on a lot of legendaries these days. Um, yeah. It's pretty, and they're like pretty uncommon. Much, even like the original ones, they're much less impactful than this. Like you look at this versus like Brave Forge Bracers. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like Brave Forge Bracers has battle worn, so it stays around forever. But it's like that gives plus one attack on your next attack after already hitting with a weapon it costs a for resource. one resource. And it costs a resource, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's an action, so it breaks the chain, which is like not great. It breaks for the work. chain. Yeah, this one does too. I was gonna. Cares. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say as well. Obviously, you need the gold to be able to do it. Yeah. So, so how many? So how many gold generating cards are there in Guardian? Now, the the only the only ones I can see are generic, like money where your mouth is, which is like a play set. You know, your next attack this turn gets plus one, two, or three. And when this attacks, you may wager a gold. So that's one mm -hmm. way of generating gold. You've got Crown of Dominion, which means you start with one in play. Yeah, you got which like would mean start... that you can't run uh, Good Time Chapeau. Yeah. Oh, of course. But, yeah, yeah, um, obviously, yeah. Yeah, but something I will say is uh, Betsy's specialization attack, Bet Big, uh, yeah. wagers one of each on attack. Yeah, so like it's wager a gold, bet, might, and vigor. Bet Big's pretty, like I said, yeah, pretty, pretty sweet with this card. 
<laughs> so you got bet big as well. But also what you can uh, also factor in as well is with Guardian, what do Guardians also like to do? They like to block. So if someone's mm -hmm. waging gold with you and they don't hit you, yeah. you then get a gold, which means that you can then trigger your good time chapeau. So if you're defending against you know, heroes like Olympia or something that likes to wage gold against you, then if you block that, you're still going to get the gold. So that's another that's a, a counterpoint to where I was going with where yeah. to get the gold from. But Which you can is... also block wagers as well. That's so. that's very funny. That like wagering a gold against Betsy might just be a bad idea. <laughs> Down, but yeah, exactly. Like, uh, maybe uh, try not doing that. <laughs> Victor's like, yeah, I've got all the gold, baby. And then Betsy wins a wager and is like, shit. <laughs> Here she comes <laughs> with the good time chapeau repeatable effect. Yeah, um, and it's like, especially for Betsy, like it is uh, a way that you can have wager happen like as long as you have a gold to do it which then triggers her hero ability and allows you to pay yeah. two to give something plus one and, and overpower like yeah it's just it's so well designed for her um it's a really good card it's really strong um yeah big fan of good time chapeau I, I big wonder fan of all of the rare helmets there's that mm -hmm. common i don't think anyone put it on their list but there's that uh common where he just makes a gold right there's the zero yeah. cost common it's just like you yeah get a, you get a gold starting stake yeah yeah so you, yeah. can, you can just starting stake too, I guess. I don't know if it makes it into the deck, but you know, just point it out. Yeah. Now I'm looking um, at all the I'm looking at all the cards now. <laughs> all the cards that make gold. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's my uh, that's my second pick. So I think we're back to as. Nice. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, by um, by um, the by the books here, obviously it's going to be another wager card, of course, uh, and this one's called Up the Ante. Uh, so this is just again building on the 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 sort of story of making all of your things wager for as much as possible. This is uh, an Olympia specialization. Um, mm. So I'm just trying to find it on here now. Uh, bear with me a second. But this is a uh, blue pitch, three block warrior attack reaction. Only Olympia can use it. But it costs X to play, and it says choose X plus one. So if you pitch a blue into this, you get to do everything because there's four options. Um, so you've got target attack wages and agility of defending hero. Target attack wages a gold with the defending hero. Target attack wages a bigger token with the defending hero. And then target attack gets plus Y, where Y is the number of times it is wagered. So if you pitch a blue into this, you're going to get all four of these, which means you wager agility, gold, and vigor, and you get plus three as a reaction. Mm -hmm. So if you've done all the things that we've said we've said previously, if you've doubled down, if you've um, if you've wagered, you get the extra thing on the uh, on the attack reactions that I said earlier. So if you can get all of this off, you're hitting them with a a load of wagers, which are all gonna accentuate your next turn and just give you a load of snowbally type effects. Um, so I'm just really, really like this. A blue block three as well is just you know you can't can't go wrong. But this is just yeah, yeah absolutely love it um yeah even in even in the worst case it still does the other two things that you want it to do really well it pitches for three and blocks for three never never turn yeah. your nose up at that so <laughs> exactly so it, it, worst case scenario it just smooths over every other thing that you want to do because you still get the plus one so you still get to wager an attack um which is what you want to be doing with olympia at instant speed well not instant speed but reaction speed to make sure you get all the other wagers that you might have built up uh to mm -hmm. attack with um so yeah, really, really like it. And as you can as you can tell, there is a theme here. I like the warrior stuff in this set. Which, well, uh you like the Olympia stuff specifically. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I but yeah, I don't hate this card on zero. By the way, um, a zero no, exactly. like for zero. If you if you know your attack's gonna hit anyway, uh, and you really just need that like agility token or whatever, like just as it's just a zero reaction, make an agility token. Zero. Yeah, yeah. Set up your next. Set up your next turn. Worst yeah. case scenario. Block with it. Pitch with it um yeah it's just it's just very good and then magical christmas land if you paid all of it you get some good stuff because um, like if, if i made olympia i'd probably make him decimator great axe olympia and like yeah. great axe and then up the ante just to get the agility is like not bad yeah for zero yeah i've seen i've seen um i can't remember what his name is but i uh, saw someone do a um decimated great axe because obviously decimated great axe has makes everything worse what well, makes the first attack you block with a half its defense or something yeah half half rounded um, up so if they block with a three it becomes two but still yeah so it just makes those points a lot harder for the the, the, the other player to 
to block, which is what you want to be doing, I guess, isn't it? So yeah. But yeah, that's my uh, number three. So over to yeah. Red Zone Rogue for number three. All right. My next card. Oh yeah, this card. Uh, this is another card we talked about last week, but I want to talk about it again because it's on my yeah. list and it's really good. So this is uh, this is a rare uh, called Down But Not Out. This is a rare generic attack action. It's a three cost, three block, five attack for the red. I was wrong. This is a full cycle. This card is... Yeah. <laughs> bananas in in limited and might actually be really good and constructed too so this card says when this attacks a hero if you have less life and control fear equipment and tokens than them it gets plus three overpower and when this hits create an agility might and vigor token so when you attack Mental. with this card if you have less life less equipment and less tokens than your opponent uh this is an three cost eight attack overpower on hit Agility, might, and vigor. Um, how is this a rare? And how do they make multiple copies? Yeah. There, there, there's a here. Look, there's a yellow version. It's the exact same thing. It just attacks for four. And then there's also a blue version, which is the exact same thing, and it attacks for three. I think the yellow is still kind of nutty because it'll come in for seven overpower, which is still yeah. really good, and then make you all the things. I think this card is like probably one of the higher picks for me in limited. Um, and also might just make it into some random, random, like actual, like constructed decks. Like this is su super good. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I love this card a lot. It's, it feels really pushed to me. Um, there's a couple cards in the set. I, I've heard and seen videos and people are like, oh, flesh and blood's powering down. And then they print something like this. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. <laughs> like this yeah. seems kind of nuts so if if people are like oh wounded bull is just such a good rate three for three for seven and sometimes it's a three for eight bro this is like three for eight that also has overpower and gives you three tokens um <laughs> yeah and blocks three like wounded bull only blocks two this thing blocks three as well so yeah uh, i'm pretty high on this card i think it's might be one of the best cards from the set uh especially for limited but maybe even not for limited i can see this just sneaking into random decks like just how Wounded Bull just randomly snuck into a bunch of decks, um, and yeah, also, it's just, it's I'll just, also point it's out just... for KO it counts as a six. The red counts as a six yeah. too. So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, I was just about just about to say with that you could yeah exactly the, the red at least in KO is still a six, which is just mental. But you know I think I think it's just it's just one of those cards, isn't it? It's just good in every application. You block with it, you pitch with it. If you need to attack with it, you still attacks for five on the red one, even if you don't fulfill the conditions you know you can still throw it at someone god the conditions um, are like so easy to fulfill though right like yeah like especially if you're, in sealed and that if your opponent's yeah. attacking you and you're like okay i'm just gonna block with a couple pieces of equipment take one damage i'll go down one lower and then here you go three for eight like yeah like you can almost set it up you can set it up yourself can't you by you know cracking your equipment if it's crackable by yeah. abilities or blocking with it if you know you're going to throw this back next turn you can really set it up to take damage and then throw it back for just ridiculous value yeah um so yeah you definitely can do that as well yeah for sure like that's yeah, a good one like i was looking at the set and once again i'm a big big fan of limited and i'm just like if i if i crack this in a pack there's not that many other cards that i'm going to take higher than this other than like in legendaries i don't think you take legendaries in packs anymore right they're they're in the they're in the token slot like uh um, yeah so like i that keeps you open it's insanely powerful like still good in ko still like I'm, I'm talking about the red one in particular specifically um yeah so yeah uh this card's crazy so that's that's my pick um down but not nice one also the art's pretty cool um dude has so many shafts in him <laughs> so many <laughs> arrow shafts spear shafts bros like shafted all up um yeah he's <laughs> he's down but he ain't out that's for he's sure definitely not yeah. out. that's yeah, right yeah. all right bill yeah uh, okay how many how many cards have you guys seen in this set where you look at it and you're like yeah i'm gonna lose to that um a few yeah, yeah. Because I think the it, it's a lot of them for me at least. Um, 
that I'm definitely going to lose to, but this one I think I'm going to lose to the most, uh, and it might be the mi- the most amount of games or just the most overkill uh, that this kills me by. Uh, but Primed to Fight mm. is my next card that I want to talk about. Uh, it is a Guardian Majestic Attack action uh, that costs five, uh, pitches for one, attacks for nine, and blocks for three. Uh, and it has two lines of text that are really, really simple. Uh, if you've controlled a Vigor token this turn, this costs one resource less to play, so it becomes four cost. And then if you've controlled a Might token this turn, this gets plus one, so it goes up to ten. So four for ten, you know, that's a pretty good stat line. But if this is what you're using the Vigor and Might tokens on, this is a three for eleven. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> Yeah, like once again, like, I, I've been looking at it from limited, and this card, if you're in Guardian, like, bro, this is gonna win games, like a lot of games. This is on its own. This just like wins a game. Um, it, it's nuts. Keep, um, keep you know block with two cards. Keep a two card hand. Smash them for eleven. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm also a big fan of cards that make slightly more narrow cards really good because uh sort of in tandem there's a warrior common or sorry guardian common right at the end of their uh block called pint of strong and stout mm, yeah. which literally all it does it's a zero cost attack action with go again that says create a might and a vigor token yeah there's... this this turns on primed to fight yeah. um on its own <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i just it's like the the stats on this are so good um i think it's really cool that it gets like basically a double bonus from each of those tokens um where it costs one less and you get a resource and then it gets plus two from its own effect and from the might token um i really like it it's a really straightforward design too it's not super complicated uh it's almost just repeating what those tokens do to you yeah um but yeah i really like it i like how it sort of slots into the existing guardian play style and even if you create a Might and Vigor token on the same turn that you want to play this, the effect still happens because you have controlled a Vigor and a Might token this turn. Yeah, um, that's true. So, yeah, just a really big fan of how clean the design is on this card. Um, I, I really like it. And also shout out to uh, the artist Bastion Jez. Uh, apologies if that's not how, how your name is pronounced, but uh, they just followed me on Twitter the other day. So, shout out. I see you. I love, <laughs> I was, I love interacting I was with artists. About- I was literally about to say that, but you 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 uh, beat me to it. I think you followed all of us recently. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. Um, um, he's been following me since Dust Till Dawn. Mm. Wow, <laughs> nice. Let me let me have this. Let me be happy. <laughs> no, it's cool. He, he he seems to be really really nice. Um, the the yeah. reason I found out that he was following me is because I I noticed him in Dust Till Dawn. And I'm like, oh God, I love his art. And then I looked him up because I wanted to follow him, and he was already following me. I was like, oh cool. <laughs> Um, what I really like about nice. this card, by the way, speaking of Bastion's artwork, is he has this very distinct style, and this card is not that style, and that's why I think it's so cool. It's it's got it's a little bit more realistic, less stylized than some of his other stuff, um, right? It doesn't have like you yeah. know radiant halos and weird stuff in the background, um, but what this reminds me of is it reminds me of like. Oh, how do I put this? Like classic fantasy artwork from classic fantasy artists, right? Like yeah. your uh, Jeff Easley's and like your Larry Elmore's and uh, uh, like your Fr- Frazetta's and all that kind of stuff. That's that's what this reminds me of, and I think it's great. And so Bastion, if you're if you're listening, um, I hope you take that as like as big of a compliment as as I intend it to be. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's the thing about this about th- this set as well is that it's probably hard to make art stand out because it is literally just big characters with armor and shields and hammers and stuff but this one is very striking uh, um in comparison to a lot of the other ones as well um it, it is hard to make art stand out in a set that is just literally just steel and hammers um so uh so yeah definitely uh definitely shout out to him there so awesome stuff yeah yeah very very big fan of uh of the card and the art uh and the artist so yeah. hell yeah <laughs> yeah and another great thing about this card as well as it goes alongside i think you might have mentioned it pint of strong and stout <laughs> mm-hmm. create a might and vigor token go again lovely old job there we go yeah very yeah. simple but works really well with uh the sort of like 
I, I would almost call this like a keystone guardian card because those are the two tokens that they make the most of. So it's a good example yeah. of what they want to do. Yeah, the the booze. It's it's a, like a vertical vertical cycle. I'm not sure what kind of cycle, but it's a cycle. There's yeah. there's the booze cycle. Each each class pairing has a different booze that creates two tokens relevant to the classes. Um, yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, it's cool. I, I like it. I was actually considering putting the booze cycle on my my list, but I opted for some other stuff that I haven't talked about yet that I will talk about shortly. Awesome. I think, Fantastic. I think, I think so it's your, your turn. That's me then, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so um, we've all mentioned our spoiler cards on this podcast, haven't we? No, not yet. No. Bill hasn't mentioned. Not Bill, yet. Bill mine is, spoilers, mine is next. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, they all appear on this list, and uh, my number my number two is my spoiler card, which seems like ages ago now when I when I spoiled it. Uh, but this is Judge Jury Executioner. Uh, this is the uh, the legendary special uh, legendary Azalea specialization, which um, which was just was great to be able to spoil that for my favorite character. And this is a one cost uh, red pitch ranger action arrow attack blocks for three and attacks for five but if it has an aim counter on it it gets when this hits they discard all but one card from their hand so it's just an absolutely amazing on hit effect uh you have to jump through some hoops to be able to get it but normally you're going to be knocking the death whistle for this or if you're you're just revealing it off the top and activating Azalea's ability blindly it's going to happen every once in a while it's not going to happen all the time because you might not have the resources to do it but when it happens you're going to win games uh and i managed to hit kel with this on the highlander game and it did exactly what uh it said on the tin and it changed the game from there so it's rough yeah it's pretty rough it's pretty rough, rough to be on the end of um yeah, no kidding so uh but lss still haven't sent this to me yet so i'm gutted that uh that i haven't received it yet because i can't play it in hartford because um, I haven't got the card, but I might pull it in the sealed pools. I don't know whether they are they even sending the cards to us this time. I'm not sure, but I don't know. They asked for my address, but uh, I don't know. Maybe because yeah. they're doing the celebrational, they haven't had time yet. Do, I, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it, looking forward to putting it in my deck. My deck list at the moment for Hartford is 79 cards because I'm obviously just leaving a space for when this is available to me. Um, you could but, probably, um, uh, if it's legal by then, you could probably just buy just one buy from it. a like vendor or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, absolutely love the card. Very, very honored to be able to spoil that for my favorite character. That's pretty much all I play at the moment. Still, you know, two years later, I'm still playing the same character. Um, so it's just a nice little full circle moment to be able to do that. I don't know whether that'll ever happen again, whether there'll ever be more azalea specialization cards and whether they'll be given to me but you know it's just it's just a nice moment and it's uh very special so yeah that's my uh my number my number two so there is a card that transcends that what's that gonna possibly be fuck me um but <laughs> who knows <laughs> there we go. who knows but uh but yeah uh, on to uh on to Kel next all right I have, a, I have a weird one uh this is a card that no one probably would have ever ever guessed um yeah. so First of all, this is another art that I just really love. This is the second piece of art from this artist that I've chosen. Uh, Ramza Ardiputra. Ardi, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but definitely mm. one of my favorite Flesh and Blood artists. I don't really talk about them all that much, but every single time they come out with a piece of art, I'm like, God, that looks so great. Um, this is Aether Arc. This is one of the cards that actually wasn't oh, yeah. spoiled during spoiler season, but instead was opened up in some some packs uh it's it's a wizard action so this is in the expansion yeah. slot and um oh i just really like this card for a couple of reasons so is aether arc it is a zero cost blue pitch three block wizard action it's a very simple card right only two lines of rules text it says deal one arcane damage to each opposing hero that's a big reason why i like this uh, and then also create a ponder token for each hero dealt damage this way. So obviously this is a really awesome card in multiplayer formats, um, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. And it's also just kind of like this big AOE splash damage card. It works better with the cards that, uh, you know, the next time you play a wizard card that does damage, it deals that much plus whatever. Uh, it works really well with all of the da arcane damage pumping cards. So you can, just a simple, say, say you're playing like a four-player UPF match, a simple plus two to this does nine arcane damage across the board. Um, you know, three to each opposing yeah. hero. Uh, and then also, 
you get to create a ponder token for each hero dealt damage this way. Um, obviously, getting multiple ponders, you know, there's diminishing returns. But if you're playing in a three-player game and you pump this up, there's probably a good chance you create at least one ponder token, um, which is great for Wizard. And then also, this is a blue pitch card, which obviously goes really well with both Kano and really well with Icelander, because you can play this mm -hmm. on their turn, instant speed from your pocket. So, um, I like it. Something uh, I was about to say before I reread the card and talked myself back down to earth. For a, for a split second, I thought the wording was create a ponder token for each damage dealt this way. No. <laughs> um, and so oh, I was like, oh, hell. yeah, you pump it up and it deals nine damage and you get nine ponder. Oh, my I, God, yeah. I do want to say this does scale insanely for bigger pods. So if for whatever reason you're playing like a six-player UPF game... Yeah. And you hit all five opposing heroes, you would draw five five cards yeah, from your, the ponders. Your intellect would go up to five, essentially. Yeah, so that's kind of nuts. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm talking realistic UPF four four yeah. player pod here, uh, maybe even like a five five player pod. Um, it's cool. I, I love I love effects like this. I love when they print cards that are like obviously designed to be better in multiplayer. It's the reason why I loved the Deathmatch Arena so much, and. Uh, yeah, this card hits all cylinders for me. Blue cost, it's a blue pitch, zero cost, blocks three, potentially draws you cards, good in UPF, art's beautiful, probably bang, like absolute banger in foil. So yeah, that's, that's my pick. Uh, oh, mate, anything anything with like Aether, Lightning in foil is just just looks sick. If they foil the Lightning parts, it just looks awesome. Like yeah. all the TOA, all the TOA cards with I... Lightning foils and looks sick. Oof. Yeah, the, lightning claws. The weird mm. thing about Wizard for me for Flesh and Blood is so in fantasy things in general, usually assassiny rogue characters are among my favorites, but my second favorites are usually wizards or sorcerers or whatever. Th those are usually what I play. I just don't like how they play that much in Flesh and Blood, but I mm. still really love the cards and I really love the art and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe someday they'll print a wizard that really, really vibes with me. Um, but Kano is too much like Storm, and I am i just don't like Storm all that much in, in Magic. And uh, Icelander is just like, fine. I actually like Icelander, not too too, too, much, too bad. But uh, um, anyway, Aether Arc, my pick. Bill. It's a good one. Hell yeah. Got, um, got, a, so... got, a, got a hat for us? Yes, uh, this is the second time specifically that I've had this hat for people. Um, I yes. sort of referenced uh, earlier, this was the Spike Feeders uh, slash my spoiler card for the set. Um, it is the prized Galea. Uh, it is Olympia's specialization hat. Uh, so it's warrior equipment head. This is another one of the rare head pieces that I think is just actually pretty pushed. Uh, it has temper two. And as an attack reaction, you can pay a resource to destroy this. Target weapon attack you control wagers a gold token with the defending hero. And this, along with, um, what was the, the name of the card? Up the Ante that, uh, that Az highlighted here. Uh, nice. I think are like the only two uh, attack reaction speed wagers that exist. Um, and I yep. generally think that that's probably a good thing because warriors in general, I think wager is a really good um keyword mechanic for warriors because most of the time with all of their attack reactions and the trickiness they can get up to they're just looking to get one damage through because there's a bunch of on hits that are good um you know there's dorinthia wanting to hit twice even if you just hit once she gets her counter um and with olympia that's not really anything different you still want to get damage through but this time it's to win wagers and most of the time, because this is attack reaction speed, you can wait for your opportunity to be like, oh, this attack looks like it's going to go through. I will wager a gold now. And then if this is the gold that, or this is the wager that you end up winning, and it's the first one, you actually get two gold tokens off this. So yeah. two gold for one resource at a spot that you can pick it after you've already gained two life, essentially, because this has temper two for some reason is crazy um i think that it, it plays super well into what's he what he wants to do um and it's another it, this one specifically um warriors did not have good head pieces for the longest time basically forever um <laughs> yeah. uh, until like until crown of providence <laughs> pretty much um, so 
yeah having like an yeah. actual specific warrior headpiece that is really good and works nicely with what this uh this hero already wants to do i think is phenomenal and i think the effect is really good a attack reaction speed wager is very strong um i so yeah. we've <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, we both got something to say on this, but but when we went when we went to the whole parasitic mechanics discussion, I think it was last week or the week before. This is a this is a pro to parasitic mechanics is being able to print uh, equipment pieces that are specific to certain heroes and certain mechanics that they care mm -hmm. about, right? Because you can then have a cheap piece of equipment, which is obviously good, looking at this as well as other ones that we've covered today that you can put in the spot of Crown of Providence or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, th th this is... You just run this in Olympia. You don't run anything else because it's just that good. Uh, and it's a rare, which is just... It's just crazy. It gives yeah. you that, that, that ability to suit up your favorite characters even though we've said before that the you know the mechanics are going to just going to be in this set and this set only but you're getting a lot of power behind that in the starts in play stays in play situation with the equipment um, yeah. and having that that thing that you can activate at you know at, you know when you want to when you know it's going to hit so just wanted to backtrack on the parasitic thing because it is bad in some places and it is good in some others so it's not it's you know it's it's balances out to some degree but um yeah, there's always going to be thoughts and stuff, and our thoughts and stuff on things might evolve and change over time. So if you're having a go at me in the comments, then unlucky, I've changed my mind again. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't uh, know me. So, you don't know me. So yeah. I, I don't think the parasitic mechanic thing is actually uh, alleviated unless they actually print more wager stuff in future sets. Because exactly, yeah. Because then it's yeah. only because like the, the 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 big downside is like. Now this is literally the only hat you will ever use ever for Olympia until the end of time ever, right? And so like, yep. that's where it gets bad, where you have no yeah, options. Exactly. This is the only hat ever. Um, I so mean, my my rebuttal to that, not to like, <laughs> not that I'm like trying to start an argument, but no, good. Um, <laughs> like Brave Forge Bracers is just the only gloves that you run for Warrior. Well, yeah, but the, but legendary. but the the thing is is like. They can print. They can print that whenever in any set. When I, like so, like but the difference is is wager is not a mechanic that they can freely print in any set because it doesn't make sense, especially if it's a draftable set. Whereas they can literally print any good gloves ever in any warrior set, and it doesn't matter what the mechanic is as long as it works with any warrior thing. That's that's the difference between that's, point. that's the difference between like a parasitic mechanic and then just a mechanic they just need to make better gloves, right? Um, yeah. So like. Yeah, that, that's the, that's the thing, um, and it feels like half the heroes are parasitic in my opinion from this set, and then half of them aren't, and it feels like the ones that aren't are pushed quite a bit in my opinion, and that would be Kasai, Ko, and um, uh, Victor to some degree, but we'll have to see because he he feels a little weird to me as well. But bold him mo mostly, sick. mostly Kasai and Ko in my opinion, but. Um, what I was going to say yeah. was to what Bill said, like, I don't know, like five minutes ago or something when I was, I was like, <laughs> they haven't print good warrior hats. And I was like, Hey, I've played Helma Sharp Eye and never activated it before. Yes. Oh my God. That just reminded me of the time that what? I was playing Bolton in an armory. I think I did. Activate and I hit it in a Lumina way. Ascension. <laughs> I, I hit, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Lumina Ascension. It was the other attack reaction. The, uh, beacon of victory. I hit beacon Ooh, of victory okay. off of Helma Sharp Eye. My opponent was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh I, my God. I have activated it, just never actually hit with never it. Never actually it's hit. It's always yeah. whiffs. I have that a nice great. one. Man, I have a, I have a cold foil one signed by Federico Musetti. But uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, it's it sure is a hat that blocks sometimes. I mean, yeah. Uh, blocks one. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, like, anyway, so that's my, that's my number four. Man, looking at the prized Galia, Galia, compared to the, the Chapeau, the Chapeau feels just so much better. Like, yes, I mean, it yeah. is a, it is a surprise attack reaction, but man, the chapeau is just activates Betsy's ability and then you can do it every why, single turn. Why is it repeatable? Yeah. And, yeah. and this one requires a resource too. Like you have to pay a resource and destroy it. The chapeau is just like, yeah, you just, yeah, you just do it. If you have a gold, yeah, do it. Like, yeah. It's ridiculous yeah i think that's the only yeah, it's, it's hard to compare i think because obviously you, there's a condition to betsy's one whereas with this there isn't a condition it's just pay the thing get it 
So I guess you you need to be set up to a certain degree to have the have the Betsy one. But you know, is she going to have the gold on field as much as Olympia might? You know, and all this. So there's loads of other things you can do, but it's hard to evaluate them both against each other. Um, but I really, really, yeah, I really, really like this. It's a great, great card, and it's and it's obviously Carlos Cruchaga. So they they gave it to you for that reason. Yeah. In the art, in the art, that's LSS there giving Bill the hat to spoil. Basically, <laughs> here is Please your here is your Marvin the Martian hat, and you're like, oh, that's right. <laughs> Where's the earth shattering kaboom? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there, just a just a bit of background as to why I really, really like Olympia and stuff, because you've got this sort of Greek sort of... Uh, th this hat here is similar to what Achilles wears in um, in the, one of my favourite films of all time, Troy. Um, and mm. so that, that, that sort of centurion, sort of horsehair sort of style thing, I absolutely love that. You know, it reminds me of growing up and just loving those sort of sword and sandal epic films and all this. So that's probably why I'm very, very high on this, because I just love that aesthetic. Um, so yeah, th this year I will be building more decks than just Azalea in uh, CC at least, uh, and maybe some other formats as well. But yeah, Olympia is going to be one of the ones that um, that I will be, will be building this year. Um, but um, but yeah, no, it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. So I'm just raving on the raving on how much I like it. Nice. Well, um, you can continue to rave because I think it's your turn next. It is. <laughs> It is my turn, yeah, and I spoke about this quite a lot last week, actually, and that's uh, the, one of the new weapons called Hot Streak. This is my, mm. uh, I, put, I put this at the top of my list because I just absolutely creamed over it last week, basically. Um, and it's just a, a rare weapon, so it's a warrior weapon, one-handed sword, so you can run another weapon in your other hand, maybe another Hot Streak or maybe a Centauri Sabre or something. Uh, but it attacks for two, once per turn action, you pay one to attack. But it says when this is defended by one or more attack action cards, hot streaks attacks get go again this turn. Um, so I raved about it last week, so I'm not going to go too much into it again this week. But um, yeah, I just think it's very, very good. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, it's a great opener because you 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 play the hot streak. Maybe there's a wager or something behind it from a uh, you know a, a non-attack action card or something. And they have to then decide what they want to do. Do they want to try and block the card that's coming in here when they might, when they probably suspect, especially in Constructed, there's so many more reactions. Within Limited and Sealed, there's not going to be as many, but in Constructed, there's so many more attack reactions that you can run over the top of this. So they can either soak up loads of damage by not blocking it, or they can block it and then have to deal with what's coming afterwards, uh, which could be something even worse. Um, so, and you can play that mind game with them with it. I think it's just, I think it's just really, really good. I don't know how good it's going to be. Obviously, the decimated great axe is a great shout because obviously it makes things uh, lower in defense. But this obviously, this this just plays an entirely different game with the opponent. And sometimes some of the opponents might not care that you're just attacking with this, and they'll just take the damage up front. Uh, but I just like the, I like the duality it gives you in. Um, in the the split play you attack with this and react over the top to maybe trigger a load of wages or you attack with this they block and then you do the thing that you actually wanted to do you bluff them to do the second thing instead um so yeah i think this is absolutely fantastic design especially for warriors because it's just mind games on a card um so uh so yeah really really um really really like where that's going with warrior mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah this card's yeah. i think it's really good and limited um, I'm yeah. not sure how good it's going to be in constructed formats because if it said no. when this card is defended by one or more cards from hand, I would be like, oh yeah, that seems pretty sweet. But it has to be it's specifically attack action cards. Uh, so yep. any you know D react or any uh you know you know non attack that blocks three or two or whatever will block it up and get rid of the go again. So. Yeah, but the great thing is about that as well, though, is if they're de-reacting a singular sword swing for two, you know you're also winning that exchange as well, right? Because you're Maybe, just pitching yeah. a, you're pit, you're pitching a card to swing for two, and they're like, "Ah, oh, de-react, unmovable." All right then. All right. No, no, it's more... block for eight. So block for eight. So I think I think a, a more realistic situation is they're attacking with this, and they they de-react and block with like that all you got, and then they draw a card because this is only attacking for two. And I think that's not unreasonable because I think Ninja's really good, and I think a lot of people are going to be running that all you got. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but I've also been on like that all you got this whole time. Good card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if there's yeah. like some Ninja Ninja Spice in the. I didn't I, I didn't pick mm -hmm. it in my as my card, but uh, I think Ninja is going to be very very good and very very played because combination of everyone seeing how good it is, winning worlds, 
plus some new ninja ninja spice in this set. Uh, I think ninja's going to be yeah. That new ninja one's good. That buffs everything by plus one, doesn't it? All combo cards by plus one. I think yeah. It's a blue art of war. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's not so, very nice. So like hot streak. I don't. I'm not sure. It might. I saw a lot of people play it in like the celebrational for the, the uh, what do you call it? The um, the heavy hitters like block, or the heavy hitters like set constructed. They ran one saber, one hot streak. Um, but I'm very curious to see in the wider con like constructed meta if this uh, cuts the mustard when they're when you're playing against a lot of people who have, like like if you're playing this against like uh, any random deck, they can just block with the uh, warmongers or something. And uh, it just blocks it up. So, I don't know. Um, cool card, though. Really yeah. cool. I, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, 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 ma it's mainly an ideal that I am that I like rather than, you know, whether it's going to be, you know, good value card for card. But I just think it's, yeah, I think the actual mechanics behind it and the thought behind it is just really good. And it opens up a opens up a play style that warriors can do is the the, the two the two card the two card thing and maybe even attack attack action after this you know because they got more attack actions now as well so we'll see how it goes but yeah I ranted about it enough last week and again this week so uh, I'll move on to you next then <laughs> yeah so my last card is a warrior card and um well here let me pull it up and then I'm gonna gush over it a little bit because I think this card is uh very very cool and um very strong and I, I like it design wise so i'm gonna talk about blade flurry so this is another attack reaction um, oh yeah this is a majestic it's a zero cost warrior attack reaction and it blocks for three it is red pitch uh, and it says once again only two lines of text very clean target weapon attack gets plus two your next weapon attack this turn gets plus two um and this card is a classic example of the flesh and blood design of zero cost plus four value, but it's split between two different, uh, basically two different effects, right? So it's like a plus two now and then a plus two later. And I think because of the splitting of the, the, the four equity, the zero for four equity equity makes this card like really interesting, both design wise and play wise, especially for the, uh, the, heroes that really, really care about this, specifically like Dorinthia and um, um, Kasai, right? And so this does give you that extra plus two. This is only targeting weapons, right? So unlike some of the other stuff we've talked about, this does you can't pump attack actions or whatever. But this could give your Dawnblade that extra plus two to, you know, hit, and then give your Dawnblade that extra plus two on the next attack to hit again so you can get that, uh, that, that counter, right? Yeah. Um, this is also great with sabers, Centauri sabers that you're going to be giving go again anyway. So you can just be like, you know, split the damage up, create those break points between two separate attacks rather than the break points on just one single attack. Um, yeah, th I think this card's like actually really good. Uh, I think it's like competitively really strong. And I think design wise, it is really interesting. Uh, and that is why I chose it for my pick. I will definitely be out of all the heroes from the set. I'm not sure if I'm going to be building any, but if I do, it's going to be Kasai. Um, I think Kasai is just really, really strong. Um, and uh, I think this card in particular is really, really good in both Kasai and Dorinthia. And maybe even like Saber's Bolton or Hatch's Bolton or something. But um, I don't know. I don't know the yeah. Bol Bolton stuff as, as, as well as some other people. So I'll leave it to the Bolton stands to... Tell me whether or not this is good for them. But for Dorinthia and for Kasai, I think this is like a banger. So, yeah, that's my pick. Yeah, it's a good one. And it's just, you just get the plus two. Like, even at the base value, you just get the plus two, right? Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's very good. So, yeah, art's cool too. Yeah. This uh, this makes me want to rebuild Hatchet Dory because it is just just weapon. It's not even two handed weapon. It's not sword. It's not dagger. It's just weapon. Yep. Yeah. Um, very big fan. Zero cost plus four. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it is very good. Um, and like I said, it's it it really helps you push those uh those on hits like for specifically like uh Dorinthia and Dawnblade. It helps you get that first Dawnblade hit. Helps you get that second Dawnblade hit. Uh, just for a single mm -hmm. reaction, and imagine having two of these. Oh, oh, good luck, good luck blocking. Oh, these, yeah. yeah, ridiculous. Wow. And you can even sandbag it. Like if you have two, you can do one, and if they don't block enough, you can sandbag the next one. Combine this with like uh, my other my other warrior pick, which was shift the tide of battle, and you can get that uh, go again, that double go again. Oh, dude, now you're eating good. You're just shredding them. 
<laughs> I think Warriors yeah. Warriors another class that's gonna be quite good. I think particular I think Dorinthia's and uh, Dorinthia and uh Kasai are like Yeah. Warrior has gotten of, a lot of really nice tools kind of in this set. Yeah. I would be Absolutely, I'd be very yeah. surprised if I don't see a uh a top eight with a with a warrior very soon. Um Yep. Yeah. I know uh, I saw on Twitter that uh Pablo Pintor was also like feeling the Durin or feeling the uh the, the Kasai and Dorinthia and I'm I'm with them dude. They just look super, super strong. Yeah. So that that is my final pick, Blade Flurry. Yeah. Nice. Uh well then I guess that brings me to my final pick as well. Um this is another just really cool like utility card um that I think does a lot of things but very well. Um this is a majestic generic attack action called Standing Order. Uh Wait, is this it the one? Attacks... Yes, okay. It's a red card. Yes, yeah, no, yeah this the red is the card, one. Yep. Uh costs 0 attacks for 4 and blocks for 3 and it is the thing that does the thing as Kel is about to say. Um this uh when it attacks or defends you may put a card from your arsenal on the bottom of your deck if you do it gets plus two attack and plus two defense so this is a zero cost four attack that sometimes if you need it to be is a zero cost six if you can mm. uh, bottom your arsenal and it can be a zero cost five block if you bottom your arsenal and it can be a popper against illusionists because it yeah. goes up to six That's like good. Yeah, just a really, really flexible card. It is also just a zero for four in the absolute worst case. That still yeah. blocks for three. Like it, it, it's like a, it's like a. I think it's called wounded blow from or wounding blow from. Yeah, uh, wounding blow from welcome to Wraith. Yeah, it's just a zero cost Except four it, attack three block. Except you can sometimes yeah. make it a six, block five. Yeah, block you can five make it a six crazy. attack that blocks five. The block um, five is kind of crazy to be honest. Uh, yeah, really like, good against you're... dominate. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. I, I really like just the breakpoints that this card happens to hit. Um, the, the three things that it does really well. Like the three things that it does, which is, in my mind, uh, is a good attack, is a good block, and is a popper. It does all of those really well. Um, yeah, I think this card's yeah. just really great. Okay. Um, I Big fan. <laughs> I think this card is also really good. And this is another one that I was like... I, I kind of want to put this on my list, but I have a feeling someone else might pick it because I think it's, <laughs> I think there's a little bit of hyperbole with this card that I've seen on social media and stuff. And some people are like, this is the next Command and Conquer. It's going to be $80. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Uh, and some people are like, it's better than E-Strike. And I'm like, I don't know about that either. But I do think it's really interesting. and I think it's really cool. And I think it is flexible. I don't think it's as flexible as E-Strike because you can't draw a card, can't give a go again. Yeah. Um, but it blocks, also, like, it blocks better, for this, which is kind of cool. But you yeah, also for this to, to attack arsenal. for seven, or for this to attack for six, you have to have an arsenal. So it's the next turn, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it is flexible in that you can just like kind of fling it in for four, right? Whereas E-Strike, you do need to have at least one card. Um, but what what I, what... I saw you make a face. I don't know if it's going to be have to do with what I, had, I have to say next. But I was like... We'll see. I'll wait. <laughs> I was going to mention this in regards to Riptide. Because Riptide always gets to... You get to arsenal a card every single time you play. Oh, wavelengths, my yeah, guy. Yeah, I was going to mention Riptide. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm like, oh, this could be cracked in Riptide, dude. Um, so, <laughs> hey, uh, if it ends up being an $80 card, I'm sorry to all the Riptide players. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, i think this is actually like really good riptide um yeah so cool pick oh uh bill didn't mention the art uh bastion also once again i can i'm gonna say the same thing that i said before this art totally reminds me of like old school fantasy art and it's amazing i love it yeah why is there a grim reaper in the background i i don't know but it's cool i don't know there's a <laughs> like look there's a there's a Grim Reaper in the yeah, on the right side there. It's just a Grim Reaper dude. I like I don't know. Um couple of demons in the front line as well and a werewolf in the back there as well. Yeah. And they're just That's quality. May, maybe this is depicting more fighting against the monastery or something, but it just looks cool. I like it. Does it does indeed. Yeah, I love how it's just it's a bunch of like dudes that are ready for battle and then death is just hanging out. He's like, "What's up?" <laughs> he just got his scythe, man. What's up? <laughs> What's up? So yeah, so cool card. 
uh, let us yeah. know down below if you think this is going to be the next Command and Conquer. Um, yeah, I I really like it, but I don't think it's quite there. Like what, um, what decks want to play this, right? Like, like I, I'm actually that's a genuine question. Mm. Like I'm not playing this in Uzuri, um, or any assassin for that matter, and you're not playing this in Ranger because you're definitely not like getting rid of your arsenal to do that. And no. you're probably not playing this in Warrior. Are you playing this in Guardian? Are you going to get rid of your Arsenal card to do this? Um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be paying three to attack for eleven, right? Um, so I yeah, if, if you got any ideas, let us know in the, in the comments below because I I think it's I think it's just one of those cards that's just going to be added to Flesh and Blood's card history, which is you know, once upon a time maybe it's going to be good. It's just like a silver bullet at the moment for yeah. certain things or, or alternative to certain things that you can try out because yeah it has a lot of utility but obviously you need the arsenal there to really sort of squeeze the value out of it but in a worst case scenario it's sometimes well it's going it's to be better than e-strike as you said because you need a card for e-strike you don't need a card mm -hmm. for this so you can just zero for four or worst case scenario so there's pros and cons it's just yeah. what better synergizes with your deck and your style really you, you can full block an azalea five attack with just this <laughs> So if, if if they yeah. do like Red and the Ledger dominate, uh, for five you can just be like uh, standing order and tuck my arsenal, block it out. Yeah, that's right. I think for this to be on the level of like being um just a power generic like E Strike Command Conquer whatever, I think it would need to be the same wording as like Crowd of Providence where you could bottom your arsenal or a card from your hand. Ah oh, yes. Um. Yep. If it had yeah. that. I would 100% agree. I'd be like, this yeah. is E-Strike level. Me too. Because then you yeah. have that additional flexibility. Yeah. But yeah, as it is with it just being Arsenal, like that is a significant commitment. Um, mm. That is, you have to Arsenal something and then your opponent either has to do something on that turn or you have to like wait around or whatever. Like there's also to... turns where you just don't have something in your Arsenal after you have like a big push and you I'm... get this and it's like, well. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious yeah. if this is going to end up being like I mentioned this uh, in the last episode or the one before that I, I'm a really big fan of Exude Confidence. And I wonder if this is going to end up being like Exude Confidence. Because I remember Exude being like super, super hype when it was spoiled. And it initially yeah. was like a 20 or $30 card. And then mm. some people played it here and there. It sees a little bit of play. And now it's like a $2 Majestic, right? Yeah, um, it was like 8 to $10 for like a while. But even then, like not a lot of people were playing it. It was played in like Briar um because i remember and then that was kind of it because it, it came out in monarch and i remember like monarch pre-orders that was like 20 to 30 bucks and then uh nourishing empty emptiness was also like really high up there and everyone was like oh these are the these are the new ones man these are the new uh east strike and cnc and then not really <laughs> not really i'm, I'm very curious yeah. if, it, if this is the real deal or if it's gonna be like uh, exude confidence i don't know um yeah. If it is like yeah. Exude Confidence, by the way, and it's two dollars, I'm gonna buy like a full binder page worth, like I did for Exude. Though, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I think I think as is right. Like this is somewhere down the line. I think this card will be really good, um, especially like if Riptide becomes good. I think this is like you just put this card in Riptide. Um, you're able to put a card <laughs> yeah. into your arsenal basically whenever you want to. Um, so this is always what you want it to be, but no other hero can really do that. So. Um, yeah, in, in most other heroes, it's just like, if this if this lines up, then cool. Um, but okay. yeah, I think the, the times that you want this to be what it is, it might not be. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. gonna try to, I'm going to, this is the uh, tinfoil hat coming on, and I'm going to try to prognosticate the future. Um, mm. I, I have a, right. I have a theory that whenever they eventually print a new class, whether it's cleric or my 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 guess is actually necro um is that one of the classes is going to be very like uh arsenal based right uh it's one of the yeah. zones that we really haven't seen classes play with other than ranger um and rangers basically their shtick is like i shoot from my arsenal but i have a feeling that there might be other classes that like oh i play non-attacks from arsenal or something like that and i was like oh that could make sense for necromancer thematically if the arsenal was kind of like their you know not not graveyard but like their little you know ritual area or something yeah. um yeah so if, if another class gets printed that like the class mechanic centered around arsenal i think this card would be like really really good in in that particular class so 
That's mm-hmm. that's my prognostication. I'm gonna be like, this is foreshadowing Arsenal class. I'm gonna say Necromancer. That's there we go. That's, yeah, it's like I think. Oh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. I was, I was gonna say yeah, just stuff that says when this is played from Arsenal, you get an additional effect, sort of style things, which then mm-hmm. could which then could give you the the zombie or, or the skeleton that you're summoning or whatever. Or like to make it balanced, maybe it's something like, um, like, you know, uh, put a card from the top of your deck into your arsenal, discard a card. You know, some sort of effect where like it just puts something into your arsenal, but then makes you discard or get rid of a card to make up for it, and then has other effects that care about things being in your arsenal. That's what I'm yeah. kind of Im- Im- imagining. So it kind of evens out, but it just cares more about arsenal space, and that that also tracks, in my opinion. As to why they're so they're printing so much more arsenal hate. There's a bunch of arsenal hate in heavy hitters, um, and it really feels yeah. like they're like preparing for some sort of arsenal thing. Um, yeah. Whereas like like before, it's just like a couple cards, you know, a couple assassin cards and command and conquer, and it really feels like they're preparing for something like that. Yeah, so. like they have they have two cards that um, are sort of uh, references, I would say, to Command and Conquer. Uh, one of them is a Guardian card, Command Respect. Yep. And the other one is a Warrior card, Commanding per- Performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I actually kind of like how Flesh and Blood does that, just off topic, that it's like, this is a, this is related to Command and Conquer, so we're just going to name it Command. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but, but it's very on the nose, isn't it? There's also that Brute yeah. card that you picked for the your top your top five as well that, that uh, yeets their arsenal as well, right? Um Yes send packing yeah so like <laughs> yeah i don't know it just feels like they're they're playing in this space and it feels like they're preparing for something i don't know maybe that i'm reading into too much into it maybe i'm giving him too much credit but uh i feel like well, maybe brian gottlieb is sweating right now <laughs> it's like yeah, he's on to right. us <laughs> that's the reason we have a podcast so we can put these wild things out there and if they hit we can say we did it we did the thing <laughs> we called it i like thinking about <laughs> game design in general though so i'm like if i was a game designer yeah. And I'm preparing for some big arsenal-based thing. I would definitely try to print answers to it ahead of time, just so the meta is prepared, right? Um, so, yeah. I don't know. It, Absolutely. So anyway, yeah. But yeah, what are your favorite cards? Leave them in the section below. And if you obviously, uh, what do you think about the Arsenal thing? Let us know what uh, what your thoughts, comments, and questions are on this, and what your favorite cards are. If we've missed them, let us know what definitely. they are. Um, but. Um, yeah, that being said, that was our top five for uh, heavy hitters. Uh, we're going to be doing it all over again for the next set, of course. But um, but yeah, anything going on outside of Flesh and Blood for anybody? Obviously, I know we got a few things coming up. A lot of us have, at least. Um, mm-hmm. I've already kind of given my spiel. I'm leaving for Japan soon. Um, I, I can give a yeah. shout-out to an old game series that I really like that I downloaded to play while I'm traveling that I found that it was on your phone. So I think I might have mentioned this, but if anyone knows what Professor Layton is, it's an old puzzle oh, yeah. series that was on like the um, like the DS and stuff. And the first three Professor Layton games are just on the Google Play Store for like ten bucks each. And I was like, I mm. I played a lot of the later ones, but I never played the first couple. So I was like, I'm just gonna buy and download these and then play them on the flight uh, to Japan. So. I did that. I played a little bit of the first one on my flight uh, to and from uh, LA this last weekend, and they're great. They're just puzzles. They're some of the puzzles are really hard. Um, so Professor Layton, shout out to the Professor Layton people. So there's that. <laughs> Hell yeah. So. Um, I guess the fun thing for me is that I forgot that I had store credit at one of my LGSs. Uh, oh. And I just realized that now as we were recording, like half an hour ago <laughs> or something. So I went and ordered myself a case of uh, of heavy hitters. So nice. Oh, there we are then. At least I got something. <laughs> how many, I guess I sh- I'm going to ask you guys, how many how many boxes of heavy hitters are you guys buying? Do you plan on? I'm going to make a whole video talking about how I'm buying less than normal. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing because I'm, that means I'm going to be buying singles instead. Um, yeah. Yep. And I think it's a good thing because that means I get to support single sellers and game stores and yeah yeah that's but that's uh, basically where i'm at right now just with i think card games in general um mm-hmm. i i do still like opening packs that is something that is indelible in my soul i i have an itch to open packs at all times 
So uh, I do still want to buy like one case um, just to roll the dice, see if I get something good, if I if I run hot on a case. But I think especially lately, um, boxes have been really like swingy in terms of value yeah. and just pulls in general. Um, so it's been tough to to uh, to justify it, but yeah. I still do want to open like one case. I'm I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm buying no more than two cases. I'm okay. buying at least one, maybe two, and that's it. And honestly half of that's for content right like some of it i'm gonna open up in my own little time definitely gonna have a a box opening video or two but one of the boxes i'm gonna use exclusively to do that uh, stream that i mentioned uh, the the heavy hitter sealed upf thing and then a box is gonna go to like my patrons or whatever um and then out of that i'll see what i pull and then whatever i don't get i'll I'll just go buy like i'm gonna buy three of the arachne card you know for example and then yeah um maybe some warrior stuff if i if i want to build kasai and that'll probably be it and play you know maybe keep a box around to play limited um and that's probably how my spending for flesh and blood's gonna go until we have another set that i just love as much as outsiders it's probably just gonna be like you know case or two i think by the way i will say this uh i think i think heavy hitters is the set that i'm most interested in since outsiders um time yeah it seems cool, and it seems like the kind of set that I want to have like a couple boxes of to play sealed or draft or whatever. Uh, I have I have some Outsiders and Arcane Rising over there, uh, which are my other two favorite sets, um, for the same reason. But yeah, I uh, I do have one thing that I completely forgot that I picked up a little while ago because we got sent a few of them uh, for the spike feeders. And I just think they're really funny. Do you guys uh, recall anything about the uh, the cross promotion that Wizards of the Coast? I know this is flesh and blood, but um, Ever not. Wizards of the Coast, specifically Magic: The Gathering, uh, the crossover that they did with IHOP. No, Remember that? yeah. <laughs> no. So apparently, accor- according to uh, what I know, what I've heard, is that there was just an exec at IHOP that was like, "Yo, Magic: The Gathering uses a, f- a thing called the stack, like of pancakes." <laughs> oh no! And they were just like, "Yeah, let's let's do this." So they uh, created oh, they created these like tie in like little tokens and sleeves, and uh, also a play mat. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and yeah so we got oh sent god. a couple of extras <laughs> and i was oh, just like no. yo can i have this oh, and uh brilliant. yeah i forgot that i had this and something just uh triggered that in my mind so that, i'm gonna that is insane i didn't even know that existed that's yeah that no, is wild this is this is official this is official <laughs> magic the gathering slash ihop brand <laughs> awesome that's the writing when when was this made was this before like universes beyond stuff no, this was like recently. This was in the last like six months. Okay, that makes sense. That tracks. Yeah, yeah. No, I see now. That makes sense. I was like, yeah. it's either that. It's either like in the last like couple years, or it's from like 1998 or something. Like it's one of those <laughs> things. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, that's weird. That's supremely we- supremely weird. Um, yeah. I, I have. Uh, I forgot that I owned that. <laughs> I actually have. I know. Once again, yeah, this is flesh and blood and not magic, but. I have had the hankering to play magic recently and I've been, I've been kind of following along with the, the murders at Karlov Manor. And it's like, it actually looks cool. And the, the, there's a bunch of cards in the set that look really cool. And I'm like, damn it. I, I might, I might like fire up arena and draft a bunch. Like it just looks super fun. Um, I don't know if I'll buy, actually buy like some cards. Maybe I'll buy like a box. Cause I do have, I do have uh one draft box from like, the last three, six, nine, twelve, like fifteen to seventeen sets, um, <laughs> because I'll just kind of like wait until they eventually tank in price, which they always do, and then I'll pick up a draft box for like eighty bucks or whatever, and then I just stick it in up 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 over there, and I'm like, okay, someday I'll draft this, um, and so <laughs> so I have a draft box of every set starting with Zendikar Rising, up till the new Eldraine, uh. Plus, also, uh, Dominaria remastered and the two jump starts and all of the, the D and D sets, and Commander Legends. Um, and so anyway, nice. my magic spending has been just banking draft boxes to draft later, sometime. Yep, that's yeah. that's yeah. that's that's that. But anyway, yeah. 
I've been I've been hankering to play. So maybe I'll yeah, play. I'll be taking. I'll be taking my um. I'll be taking one commander deck to SCG Con because there's a big magic thing happening there at the same time. I don't know whether I'll have time to play anything, but I'm taking it just in case. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one thing I'm going to be doing as well. Uh, very very soon is going to the US for SCG Con, which is yeah. going to be going to be a fun time. So I'm going to be doing loads of vlogs, and um, you're going to see pretty much same sort of same sort of stuff as Barcelona just random GoPro videos with random guests getting drunk and having drinks and stuff and no no sort of filter behind it just you know just having a great time while we're there um so that's going to be that's going to be good fun and uh my original character playmat has now come to me as well so this is you'll be able to see it in in the thing nice um, oh sick so uh it looks pretty cool i've only got 3 of them at the moment i don't know whether they're going to be mass produced or not but that one's just for me so uh glad i got that back but um apart from that uh i was i was i was listening to uh watch a show called angry joe on youtube so he's like uh <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead. You know who he is i watched angry joe like like 15 years ago or something like like oh, a mate. long no, long now. time ago like <laughs> like a long still watch him yeah, he used to dress up as like a commander guy. Like he's like commander uh, video game or something like that. I don't know, remember exactly. Um anyway, go ahead. Yeah, go I was ahead. watching I was watching uh, I was watching his best game best video games of 2023 today. Um because I might be speaking about uh video games, card games, board games in another fashion very very soon. Mm. Uh just an all-encompassing series potentially. Uh, I don't know yet, but we'll see. Uh, but um, his top ten games of twenty twenty three. Uh, one uh, n- number ten was a game called uh, Rogue Trader, like forty k yeah. Rogue Trader. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's like I, uh... haven't, I, I haven't played it, but it's like a it's like a sort of CRPG style game, but yeah. in forty k universe. I might have mentioned it at one point, and I mentioned it in mm. something. I might have been at Living Legends, but I was looking at look potentially getting Rogue Trader. Yeah, it's a uh, CRPG. I heard there's a lot of dialogue, like a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue. Yeah, and um, yeah, and the only thing he mentioned about it, uh, the, obviously, the game is fantastic and the story and everything is 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 great, but it's not it, all of it. It's not all. It's not all voice acted. So there is a yeah, lot of reading. Exactly. Whereas in yeah. BG in BG three, it's all voice acted. Whereas in this, it is a lot of dialogue, like the old Baldur's Gate two and two and one and two. Um, but um, yeah, the studio that made that also made the Pathfinder CRPG game as well, which came out in 2021, which I haven't played. But again, looking at the Steam profile for it, it looks really good as well. And it's not something bad. I'd be well into. I, I played Pathfinder um, Kingmaker. It's like, it's all right. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Yeah, I'm a, um, I'm a big fan of CRPGs in general. Um, Neverwinter Nights yeah, is probably my favorite series. I love Neverwinter Nights and Neverwinter Nights 2. But uh, oh, yeah. the, the Pathfinder game is all right. Um, yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, that's just one thing I was, I was going to explore. Potentially going to going to be playing a bit more video games over the next year. Mm. Uh, for, so, for people that don't know, I'm moving out of here. So, me and my me and my girlfriend are moving back in with my mum for a bit, so we can save a lot of money to then get our own place. So, I'm going to need stuff to do while I'm there, basically. So, I'm just going to be playing a lot of games, spending a lot of time doing more stuff. Um, whether that will impact Go Again Gaming or not, I don't know. Uh, so that's another thing as well, uh, which uh, is a bit up in the air at the moment, but I'm sure I'll make it work. Um, but, um, yeah. but yeah, so uh, looking to explore lots of other different mediums and do lots of diff- other different things over the next year or so. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's it. That's Living Legends podcast this year, this week. Top five cards, what are yours? Leave, leave a comment section below. And thanks to the Banished Zone as well for sponsoring this episode. You would have seen uh, my mustache mouth on Victor Goldmain's head at the start of this uh, <laughs> the start of this video. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so thanks for that. They're holding their pre-release uh, this weekend on the twenty seventh. Um, so go along to that. And also at this point in time as well, they will have their website live hmm. with shipping available. So you can uh, you can get it. They're based on the East Coast, USA. Um, so uh, you can buy stuff from their website now and get it shipped to you, which is good. Um, so go and have a look at their website, which is banishzone.com, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Unless anyone else has some burning stuff, but I think that's pretty much it. No, I think we're all good here. I Fantastic. need to 
go record some more videos. That's what I'm gonna do. I've yep. <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting to record some Grand Archives Grand Archive stuff because the devs sent me early boxes and they got delayed over a week because of the ice storm here. And um, well, now I finally got yep. them like a couple days before release, so I'm gonna try to pump them out. So oh, also I have a random thing as well before before we end. Um, I watched your video with Dave from Grim Path. Oh yeah. And I commented. I commented on the video as well, and he emailed me saying if I want to, if I want some stuff, and I'm like, yeah, all right then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> D- Dave. Uh, long long story short, um, he uh, he and I message each other every now and then, uh, and he he yeah. messaged me. He's like, oh, the Golden Game Gaming guy knew <laughs> knew the game I was on. And he was like, he was actually like really excited about that. Um, yeah, he said he said he watched videos of mine. I don't know which ones, and I apologize if you know they're they're a bit a bit chaotic and stuff. But you know that's just the nature of the channel. Um, but yeah, um, he's going to send me some pre-made decks, and then uh, he said also a homebrew booster pack to crack as well. So I don't know what I don't know what that's going to be. Um, but yeah, I'll be getting that soon. So I don't know what that what that, what that's going to be. I did say to him that I, me and my mate, would be able to play like a get like a do a gameplay video, just like me and my mate who we don't really play Magic anymore. We used to play a lot of it, but um, I might be able to rope him in to do at least one video playing with pre-made decks. Um, so I'll see I'll see all that goes. No promises or anything, but um, I might be able to rope someone into do it, rope someone into doing it. But yeah, it looks really cool, and your your video was great. You know, speaking to him for two hours, it was a nice one to watch. So, yeah, yeah. D- Dave's Seems good. Like a nice guy. Yeah, he's a great dude, and like he's a video game veteran, man. Like we talked about a little bit in the video, but he's been working in yeah. the industry since PlayStation Two era. He worked on Psychonauts and Brutal Legend. He worked at Double Fine, like a bunch of like big, well respected games. He uh, still works in video game industry. I'm not sure if he wants to. He probably doesn't want me to tell where he works currently, but. Um, Mm. he's like a legit game designer. And so like, I think it really shows through the quality of uh, Grim Path. Uh, It really feels like someone who knows what the hell they're doing rather than just some rando person that saw that, um, you know, oh, Kickstarter games are doing well. I'm going to make my own. No, it it feels like legit um, the same way that Grand Archive and Sorcery felt like legit to me. And so, yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just, it just exists in a very unique space as well, right? So it's just going to be interesting to see what happens with it. And it feels like it's very kitchen table friendly. doesn't need to be pure hyper optimized either. Um, yeah. I mean, like, but um, it's uh, like a war game, right? You can do whatever the hell you want with it. So like, yeah, like I mentioned in like the, the first or the second video, I guess I'm just like, if you just buy it and just have like, you know, the two armies or whatever, you can just treat it like a literally just treat it like a board game. Um, yeah. I'm pretty gutted though because uh, we'll end this podcast in a moment, but there's just a load of load of random stuff on the end. Uh, but um, I'm gutted because I got rid of a lot of my uh, miniatures that I collected for ages oh, uh, no. a, couple of, a, a couple of years ago. So you it's just gutting, them. really. I could have used them, yeah. And there's a there's a there's a there's a hero, not a hero, whatever they call it. I don't know, I can't remember what it is. The the avatar that you use. What's oh, that called? Like in, it's a your warlord. Warlord, yeah, that's it. There's a warlord that's basically a drider, like a lady with yeah. a spider's yeah. body, a spider. And I had a model that I could use, I could have used for that. So I'm gutted because I had a sick drider model. I was like, yeah, she's like um, my favorite. She's like, uh, I think her name is epic. like Web Web Wraith, or something like that. Yeah, the Spider Queen. Yeah, she's she's legit. Yeah. That's why I used her as the the art for the, the the video that I did for the first video. Yeah. Um, just a bit of deep lore behind my uh, my, char- my my actual character Demiana. What she she gets all of her powers and her her random swords from a hag like spider lady that she goes to make a pact with. Um, so that's a deep lore for my deep lore for my character. But I absolutely love um, love Driders. One of my favorite one of my favorite sort of enemies to face. Um, giant spiders, absolutely horrific. If you if you've fought a giant spider in real life, you'd be shitting yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> Let's be honest. Oh, oh my god, those legs coming at you like massive, like oh. one of my favorite characters from like D and D lore from the War of the Spider Queen. This is super nerdy stuff. No one, no one's ever read these books except for me. Um, and no one's watching at this point yeah, either. No one's They've watching, all switched off. <laughs> but there's a character. Her name is Dana Fay. She's she's like one of my favorite characters. And uh, spoilers. Well, she she may or may not end up as a as a drider. Um, nice. Yeah. Anyway, amazing. Oh, no, right. Anyway, it? that's uh, okay. Anyway, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Some, someone was correct. <laughs> anyway, I think was it might it? be. I think it might be a different character. I think Danafe might end up as 
Uh, one of them ends up as like the body for Lolf, and the other one. Uh, anyway, well, moving on, moving on to the absolutely, end. yeah. Uh, but thanks very much for tuning in. This has been the Living Legends Podcast. I've been your host for today. My name's Az from Go Again Gaming. You can find me on Go Again Gaming on YouTube and Go Again Gaming AZ on Twitter and other socials. Uh, but that's probably where I'm going to be the most active. Just random thoughts coming out, and then obviously loads of videos from Hartford as well. And then what comes after that, we'll see. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's that's where you can find me, Kel. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me in the Forgotten Realms wiki, looking up uh, what happened oh, to Dan- what happened to Danafe. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh, so so Danafe did become part of Loth. Who am I? Who am I thinking? Who became the Dreader? Anyway, so uh, hi, I'm Cal. You can find me anywhere at uh, Red Zone Rogue. <laughs> Uh, I talk mostly about card game, mostly about card games, um, specifically Flesh and Blood, uh, Shadowverse, and Grand Archive because those are the ones I'm enjoying the most. A uh, little maybe thing that I'm thinking about: I might be um, looking to do more Magic content on my Magic channel. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I think I might be able to do weekly content. I don't know. Um, that's something I'll think about, and when I get back from Japan, I might do that. But uh, you can find me at Red Zone yeah. Rogue everywhere, and if you. For whatever reason you want to see my loose magic content, uh, it's at Red Zone MTG, and I might change the name. I don't know. So nice. There's some stuff. Yeah. And uh, Bill, how about how about Bill? Uh, that's me. I'm Bill. Uh, I am Bill from the Spike Feeders. You can find me on YouTube at Spike Feeders Fab. We do live edited gameplay content. Uh, mostly in the form of the Goliath Gauntlet, where we play Blitz against... Uh, we play one deck versus a bunch of different decks. It's a ton of fun. You should definitely go check it out if that's something that interests you. Uh, you can also yeah. find me on social media at uh, BillTSF, uh, which I am sometimes spontaneously active on, but uh, mostly not, but uh, that's where you can find me. So, <laughs> Awesome. I found Whenever it. Bill tweets... Whenever Bill tweets, he's stuck at an airport or something, or yeah. he's he, he's stuck in a hotel or something like that. Whenever uh, I tweet, it's just a good time. <laughs> it doesn't funny. happen a lot, but you know, it's like lightning. Uh, it only strikes once in a while or something. I don't know. Absolutely. Unless it's a yeah. lightning storm, and then Bill's tweeting like mad. Man, he's just going, yeah. he's just going to town. Uh, but until next time, this has been Living Legends podcast. We are over and out. We'll see you next time. Cheers, folks. See you around, everybody. Bye. 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 Did you find out the Spider Lord lady's name? Halistra. It was Halistra. <laughs> Danafe became the like vessel for Lolf. Halistra, she became like a drider and became what was called the Lady Penitent. By the way, Lord, uh, War of the Spider Queen, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, specifically if you like Dark Elves in D&D, the War of the Spider Queen anthology is like eight books or whatever is really good and each book is written by a different author and they they follow the story between it's during the time of troubles where the gods they were fighting each other so like they lost connection to the goddess Lulf and so there's a lot of like upheaval in the the dark elf uh, society which is normally like a matriarchal society so there was like a lot of like upheaval there's some cool characters one of my favorite characters of all time Farin Mizram who's a he's a wizard dude he's like a really like snarky kind of wizard dude um he's in it um there's some other characters that appear in bigger D stuff like gromf uh benra anyway um i like D lore and, and stuff and where the spider queen is really good um it's looking at it on amazon there's a couple of audio books as well actually so that might be easier for me to listen to the audio books oh it's it's really good uh don't get attached yeah. to any characters though because it goes hard. <laughs>